Out. Okay. What's up, guys? Um, I'm trying to be professional here, but uh, Nihar's video just dipped real quick. Hold on. Let's see if he comes back. Let me get it back. Ah, there he is. And the frat boy in all. <laughs> fucking stop, stop. No, um, but welcome to episode one of the Essential Question Podcast with Anuj. And uh, today we got a very special, very esteemed guest, <laughs> uh, the god himself, uh, Nihar. Uh, tell good. the people what's up. What's good? Um, I'm Nihar Shrikantepa. I go to UC Merced, third year econ major. Uh, Patriot Nation, let's go. Let's get this done. Fuck let's up. get this done. Ew, you're, he's, he's a Patriots fan. Can you fucking believe this shit? How, how is that even, like, legal in today's How is that legal? How are you a yeah, Niners legal. fan? That's what I want to know. Bang, bang, Niner gang, baby. Bang, bang, faithful gang. then, faithful now. Woo! See, as you can tell, Where y'all when uh, Kaepernick was playing, dude? Already? When the so, stadiums were, like, completely empty? I was there, bro. It was, I like, actually, lockdown. Like, showed was, up it's, it was, like, COVID-19 I actually showed happened, up. like, five years back, dude. I like, actually, like, showed up to those games. Nobody's you know, there was like stadium. a, it was really funny. There was like a meme. I think it was like four years ago. They played like the Bengals. Do you remember this? And there was a guy who's like from Silicon Valley and he was working. He was literally like from Intel and he brought his computer to the game and he was sitting there and just working. And someone took he a wasn't picture and they were the like, and they were like, meanwhile, Niner fans. And it's this guy literally drinking wine up in like the nosebleeds and fucking working. I was like, of course, this is our <laughs> fucking city. Comes up the season. <laughs> I'm like, this is classic Santa Clara at its finest. <laughs> was it an Indian dad? No, no. I think he was white. But it was really oh, funny. It was, it was Indian would be perfect. Dude, yeah, it would have just fit the stereotype, right? <laughs> we would have totally just, uh, that would have just been the goaded stereotype at that point. You can hear me well, right? My audio. Yeah, I can good. hear you. My quality I sound is sexy. good. sexy. What about uh, my mic? Oh, uh, yeah, your mic sounds dope. Yeah. It sounds like you're about that, to uh, game. gaming headset. Oh, uh, did you steal it from your brother? <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, today's uh, first, oh, well, the question for today is, uh, is democracy dead? Um, so I know that's like a super clickbaity question. Hashtag Graham Stephan. Um, but <laughs> any of you who watch Graham Stephan know dude, what that bro. means. Uh, but basically what we're going to be talking about today is... Um, like this whole idea and like i've been thinking about this i know you have too of like how like democracy has just kind of transformed not only for the past like four years but from like when we were born really in 2000 you know so for both like those of you who don't know we're both like relatively young we're considered like char- gen z but like i don't really consider myself to be part of gen z it's very complicated but uh but yeah uh what are your thoughts on like the initial question is democracy dead what do you think so I think this is a very deep question, many facets to it, but we can look at, I guess there's two sides to it. There's the political side of, um, oh, our elected officials and what exactly they're doing, that part of democracy, and the other side, which is the social aspect, which is more of um, like the expression of ideas or just kind of um, people talking out their opinions. So I think we, we can break down both sides of that. But in my opinion, just to keep it short yeah it's good. yeah i think to a certain extent i wouldn't go to like i'm i'm gonna like further kind of expand on this later yeah. i don't think democracy is like completely dead you know what i'm saying like i'm not like oh democracy's dead the revolution begins like viva la france like i'm not that <laughs> not that status yet but like i think i'm more so along the lines of like we're headed down the wrong path but like what can we do to like make sure our elected officials are accountable and like what can what can we do to make sure like we are accountable for our actions that we're like voting for and i think the first thing that's like the most important is like i think everyone's got to go out and vote you know what i mean like i don't care if you're democrat if you're republican if you're fucking independent if you're green party whatever like i think voting is just the most important thing right i would say i I would disagree because i think that um what we really need to be focusing on is the dialogue you know like a podcast like this, people sitting down and expressing ideas, because right now we're at a stage where the media is polarizing everyone. They're, Fox News is saying, hey, those dumb liberals over there, like, get wrecked, because Trump just smashed you in the debate. And all the liberal news channels are saying, oh, look at this, uh, Trump's denial of reality. I'll pull up an exact quote from CNN, but that was something what they said, like, yeah, no, I, I, Biden said this, it, yeah. which is slightly controversial, but What you should be focusing on is Trump's denial of reality. And that kind of sums up really the big problem. It comes down to news feeding us opinions rather than news. That is the biggest problem. 
for sure. Because when you polarize people and kind of say, oh, those liberals and those conservatives, you're creating a us versus them. And that yeah. only entrenches us in our beliefs more and leads to less dialogue. Yeah. So actually, just like follow up on that real quick. Like, how do you think it like got to this point? Like, I've been thinking about this a lot. It's just like, how do you think like we got from like, to like the point where we're at like the obviously we're at an all-time high in terms of polarization right yeah but like how did we get here like it wasn't like this all the time you know what i mean like and this is like this is something like i want to say is just like early on during covid i was like okay like i had hope honestly for like elected officials and all this stuff because i was like okay usually it takes like these fucking worldwide events to like really like bring the big picture perspective to people you know what i'm saying like like look at 9-11 back in 2001, right? Like George W. Bush was like, looked at, obviously like you could argue that political polarization at that time was also very high because of that, you know, that contested election in 2000. And, you know, you're coming off that. Yeah, and you're coming off that contested election and then um, 9-11 happens. But like to George W. Bush's credit, I think he did unify the country. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think- I think like in a time of crisis, you can either pull away or you can like bring people together. And I think Bush, I, even though he's Republican and I know it's probably a pretty unpopular opinion to say it, I do think he did unify the country to an extent and he did bring people together. And like, you know, obviously like pay, there's a bunch of controversial legislation that was passed during that time period, but at least like shit was getting done, you know? And it's like, I was hoping well, that co- COVID would have like a similar effect on that you know what i mean like in terms of just like bringing people together and like this whole idea of like we are american we're not democrat or republican but unfortunately it hasn't done that well i would say that um the reason for this polarization comes down to sensationalism you know kind of overblowing these things and creating sides and stuff and i think it comes before 9-11 because i mean i talked about this with my dad a few days ago and he was saying yeah before 9-11 you know if you were a bush supporter or if you were a um a Clinton supporter, you know, you could just talk it out and it, you could just have a conversation, just go about your day. But now if you say, oh, I vote for Trump or I voted for Biden, it turns into just this brawl of just opinions and people just going at each other. And I think yeah. it comes down to on 9-11, horrible tragedy, but it kind of, it shook America down to its foundations. And really from that point on, we were not the same it became this point of, of kind of, over, of overblowing events and kind of twisting things out of context for the sake of agendas. You know, like while, while they were sending troops out into the Middle East to do God knows what, mm-hmm. they were telling the American people, oh, we're winning this war. We're going out doing all these, this good stuff. You know, we're going after Saddam. We're going after bin Laden, all that stuff. And really, in reality, the troops are doing nothing. You know, they're going out and they're they're going and fighting for oil. I mean, the oil companies, they they literally divided up the land. Yeah, I mean, I think like, I think I do agree with you. Like it got to that point, you know what I mean? But I think the initial intent of like, okay, we're going to go to Afghanistan. We're going to go to Iraq. It had good intentions. You know what I mean? And I think there was like a positive, I I think, okay, less so for Iraq, more so for Afghanistan, right? And like, oh, one, when Bush was like, okay, we're going to go into Afghanistan. I was like, okay. I mean, obviously I wasn't alive, so I couldn't have been like, I support this decision. I was a year old, but, um, but like now, like looking back on it, it's like, okay, like I support his initial intention, you know, like, I think the goal, I think we can all agree was to find Al Qaeda or like find leaders of the terror organizations and bring yeah, it down. Get right? Like for that was the, to us that was the initial account. goal. And I think yeah. a lot of Americans were on board with that plan, but mm-hmm. it, I mean, obviously it took like 15, 16 years for us to really like fully pull out. And I don't even think we're fully pulled out now. We're not. Yeah. We're still and, there. and so it's like, it's ridiculous. And so it became, it's what started out as like initially a good plan. And like, I, if you, I don't know if you know this, but like Bush, like America, like won, or like, they basically, you know, were, were able to get to Afghanistan and get their agenda, you know, pushed across. Like they wanted to institute democracy and they did that within like a year, a year and a half. And I was like, okay, your job is done. You can leave now. But like, I, I think it turned more political as, as time went on, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, like, like kind of the Americas is America's the world, the world's police force or something that became a yeah. topic. Of and it's like, and it's like, it went from this whole idea of like, okay, we are, 
you know, going there to do something. And then the intention got lost in the sauce a little bit. And then now you're here like 15 years, 16 years later, and nothing has been resolved. You yeah. know, it turns out Bin Laden was in, Bin Laden may have been in Afghanistan, but he fl- fled to Pakistan. And then obviously he was, you know, killed in yeah. 2011. Um, but, you know, so like that, the, I feel like the intention definitely did get lost there. Um, but yeah, that was my thing. I mean, I don't think it started out as like, okay, we're going to go get oil. I think there was an initial intention that was good, but obviously the intention got lost. And I think that's, that's the issue is I feel like back then, to a certain extent, we kept like people kept Bush accountable. You know what I'm saying? Like his approval ratings as like his presidency went on. I think you know this, like just dipped completely. Right. And like, and I think that was good. And I think like we were like, it came to like, but the good part was, I feel like Democrats and Republicans at that time were having civil conversations. You know, it was still like the beginnings of the polarization that we see today, but I feel like there was still like legislation that was being passed. I mean, you look at the recession, things were passed like Dodd-Frank and all that stuff. Like that all happened with Democrats and Republicans joining together in times of crisis to do something. Yeah. And, in, and you look even in 2020, like I'll give them credit the, the cares act, all of the stimulus stuff was all on them. They did a great job, you know, and like, they were able to get that done. But I mean, you see what's going on with second stimulus. This is fucking ridiculous. Like it's, it's become a political piece, you know, like exactly. It's like Trump's lives. like, I'm not going to do anything be- until like the election passes, like, Oh, vote for me. Or it's essentially like Trump's like, Oh, if you don't vote for me, like you won't get stimulus. And it's like, what the yeah. fuck? Like, it's literally like, dude, why are you like the whole goal here? I feel like, and this is like where politicians lose their intent and it's more so a game. It's like your initial goal as a politician is to get elected to run something. You know what I'm saying? to like help the country, to run the country. But once you get into politics, there's a bunch of other little like office politics games and there's politics within the politics, if that makes any sense. You know what I mean? Like- I would say it's even a step, it's a multiple steps beyond office politics. It's just like dirty. Yeah. You know, people get dirty on each other and it's kind of like, how exactly can I use this person's shortcomings to get my agenda pushed into the- Mm -hmm into the forefront you know this there's so much dirty stuff that goes on behind the scenes yeah and it's like it's so it's just it's gotten to the point where it's just utterly ridiculous and i think american people in general are just sick and tired of it like yeah i don't but i mean what can you do it's just i i would say that's just human nature yeah when we're introduced to such power like this of literally running the most powerful country in the world what happens for sure this happens corruption bribery um lobbying all this stuff that you... yeah I, uh, I, so I mean i want to i want to ask you this question so i was doing i was doing a little bit of, of, of research you know research. wow anuj anuj does research that's very surprising um this is actually very surprising my dad would be proud of me so dad if you're listening to this i did do research for this um nah so aka my research was uh watching aoc's twitch stream of among us oh my god <laughs> yeah um oh, i actually watched okay. clips of it it was kind of cool i never like played among us but that's besides the point uh but no aoc was uh on twitch or whatever right and she was on twitch with like the uh i think with ilhan omar who's like a member of the house of representatives a couple yeah. other gamers i don't really know like who the other people were but i know she was on with ilhan because she said her name a couple times mm-hmm. um so AOC was on there and she was like playing video games or whatever. And there was this thing that came up where it was like, oh, can we call you AOC? I don't remember who said it. And then AOC was like, oh, you guys can call me AOC, but Mike Pence call, can't call me AOC. And it's like, that like really like exhibited this fact that like politics has gone beyond like the, like politics isn't a job anymore. It's like, it's gotten personal. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And it's like, it's gotten to the point, and this is like no discrediting to AOC. Like I may not agree with her. I don't know her as an individual, but like it's it's really just like continued to like exacerbate this point of like, okay, politics is personal now. You know? It's yeah. not so and much it's that's the biggest problem because you can't let emotions dictate your decisions. Yeah. You shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. And like, listen, I'm AOC and Mike Pence are like complete opposites. It's very, it's like, <laughs> you know, like I get it. <laughs> like, yeah, fucking Mike Pence is this old white dude. And AOC is like this, you know, AOC, I think represents in a lot of ways, like this, our younger generation, you know what I mean? Like the ideas that she has and whether you I agree with them or not. I disagree because she's a bit more at the extreme end. 
I would say, okay, yes. I would say, but I would say there are a lot of the young people that do think like her, right? She has a big yeah. fan base. There are a lot of young people that respect her. And I do actually respect her. I respect her that she built her platform from the ground up and she won her way fair and square into the House of Representatives. I have no mm-hmm. issue with her, right? Doing that. I may take issue with the Green New Deal and some other things that she like puts into Congress, but I don't like dislike her. You know what I mean? Like, I think she, she like built her way here fair and square. And I think we should all, you know, take a second to respect. Yeah. Her. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you agree with that as well. Yeah. I mean, um, I have nothing against her again. Like you said, I don't know her. Yeah. And I'm while saying, I, I may not agree her. with her policies I mean, as an individual, I, she hasn't done anything. I mean, so. she like, what if she's just a homie? Like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we like meet her in real life and she's hella chill. And she, I bet with. she's chill. She seems chill. Yeah. And it's like, okay. Um, but like, I don't really have like, I mean, I just wanted to get your thoughts on like that whole AOC Mike Pence thing. Cause I was like, Oh, like, I don't well, know. I think that's, it just comes off as petty. You know, yeah. it's like, Oh, you, you guys can say it, but that guy, no, no, no. He gets yeah. It. And it's like, yeah. I think it's just that like proved the point of like this whole idea that we're talking about this division, right? It's like, Oh, Mike Pence can do this, but y'all can't like, you know what I mean? And it's just, yeah, it's a little ridiculous to me, but you know, it is what it is. Um, and I guess that's where uh, democracy is headed. Uh, if not already at so um no nah, but uh i had also another quick question that i have written down here uh do you second. think like trump is the main cause for the political polarization or do you think it's uh, more wait, so wait, give, me, give me one second Hold yeah on. little break time here you good Sorry about that. My brother is annoying. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shout out to little <laughs> but yeah, keep going. even though I am one. Um, but uh, I was going to ask you a question. I was like, what do you, do you think Donald Trump is the main cause of this like political polarization that we have in this country? Or was this something like that you think has just been coming for a long time? So I would say that he is not the cause, but he's a symptom of it. The cause of this is kind of sensationalism in the media because we got to look at the media before, you know, it's like newspapers, you know, um, the, the wall, um, the New York times, you know, did sell physical newspapers and that was, that was their source of revenue. But now with everything moving online, how do I get revenue? I need clicks. I need you to click on that article. Oh, look at what Trump said in this debate. Wow. Click that's money. And this idea of sensationalism starts to polarize people, right? Because I need crazier and crazier headlines to grab your attention. And yeah. we look at where, where we are now with headlines not even feeding us um, facts. It's basically just opinion rammed down your throat. For sure. No, I think I, that, that's the yeah. cause of this polarization. And uh, naturally, yeah. the politicians have to adapt to that. They have to be like, you know what? Everyone's going more extreme, so we have to appeal to that. And that's sure. where you see, like, I've talked about, about this with my dad so many times, like McCain versus Obama, Obama and Romney versus Obama. I could flip a coin and vote for either of them. And I, I would be happy with my vote. You know, they were all great candidates. But now, Hillary versus Trump and Biden versus Trump, people are saying, oh, vote for Biden or vote for Trump because they The aren't settle for candidate. Biden movement. Yeah. What was that? The settle for Biden movement. Like that whole yeah, idea that, where it's like- That makes no sense to you me. You know, it's, it's like, like, well, I fucking hate both these people, but like, I guess we just got to like settle for Biden. Like that's yeah, like the like, big movement on Instagram. Yeah, like yeah. that's that itself shows the entire problem with American democracy. We shouldn't be saying, oh, these two people suck, but you know, this guy sucks a bit less. So I guess we'll vote for him. That mm-hmm. should not be happening. We should be having two people. This is the presidential election. This is the Super Bowl of politics. <laughs> we should not be having- the New York Jets and the Dallas Cowboys going to the Super Bowl. This should hey, not hey, be hey, happening. Hey. Dallas pre Dak, and Dallas is still first in the division. Okay. Garbage time touchdowns. They're not anymore, dude. The Eagles fly, Eagles fly, dude. Wait, bro. I thought it was tied. Is it tied? No, dude. The Eagles were one four and one. Now they won, so they're two, now they're four, two and four and one. Oh well, I mean, technically, the Cowboys haven't played their next game yet, so that's why. Okay, but if if the Falcons they playing? picked up a kickoff, they they would have won that. Who are they playing? Today. No, the Cowboys. Um, I think they, I mean, CD Lamb, who's he playing? Got a little football break, guys. Got it, got it. Oh, Washington, this should be fun. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, okay. And Gibson sure. at Washington, oh. Okay, anyway, three. continue, continue. Okay, we're not, yeah. we're not, okay. Fantasy football, another time. For those of you who are so into the football, point is, do let this, me know. This is the Super Bowl of politics. We shouldn't be having two people that we don't like. Yeah. We have to choose for the one we think is less bad. We should be, we should be having the two 
best politicians, the two best options, go head to head and vote on their conscience. Who is the best? Who aligns with my beliefs more? That is what we should vote by. Right. I mean, honestly, with like the Democratic primary, I was very like, eh, on like most of the candidates. Like, as you know, I dislike Kamala Harris. I'm going to repeat that for the people in the back. I hate Kamala Harris. I will get into that later. Um, (laughs) I, I wasn't like the biggest fan of Yang. I wasn't like, I'm not like a big, huge Bernie bro. I mean, like most of the candidates that ran, like I was very eh on, like even Biden, I was like, eh. Like initially I was excited because I like, I, I actually, I think if Joe Biden ran in 2016, I would probably be more excited. But, um, cause like, I think Biden had actually, I, I had a theory that I was like, if Biden had run in 2016, I think he would have just ran Trump. I think it would have been absolute landslide because Biden had so much momentum coming into that. Like, I think, yeah. he but obviously the stuff with Bo and like all of that, like personal shit comes first, obviously. Mm-hmm. But like, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know, like, with joe like it just feels like it feels like he's just like his campaign more so is like this whole idea of like i am the nice guy you know what i mean like i am i'm just the guy who's like you know chilling like i'm just gonna do what i gotta do and uh you know he just seems like very run-of-the-mill like plain he doesn't he doesn't really seem like he has a plan he like whenever he says he has a plan for like covid he just says the most like general things like we're gonna put masks on everyone like all right, dude, cool. But like, what How are the numbers? That? What's the you economics? Know? Like what, like what is, I need specifics. And it's just like, unfortunately, like Joe, Joe Biden does something really well. And I think Joe Biden and Kamala Harris both do this really well. And it's called glittering generalities, right? It's this whole idea that like, oh, we are going to do all of these things. And they sound beautiful, right? They, they're these like sur- surface level statements. Like Nihar, I'm going to put on a mask for the rest of my life every time I go out, right? Sounds great on paper, but it's like, how are you going to enforce it? What are the economics? What is this? What is that? And when you dig deeper into these things, like they have less and less answers. And that's like where I'm at with these two. But yeah, you know. See, in the debates, I just saw a lot of pathos. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about like, the debates debates a little later. Okay, okay, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll I'll, I'll have you save that for a little later. But yeah, like, yeah. I I do like back to the question of like, is Trump like the main cause of divisiveness? I think he he's an amplifier of the of the divisiveness. I think there was divide between the country, and I think Trump just like you know enraged the divide within people. You know what I mean? Just with like his statements, with the things he said which is the political correctness stuff. Like, and then I feel like more and more that like Trump would speak, the more and more people would be divided. And so he was more so like someone who amplified like something that was already there, right? And so do you think our tolerance for ideas went down or do you think it's just ideas that just pissed people off? I think with Trump in particular, it was more so like this whole thing of like, I think the recession really just like took the trust out of a lot of Americans. Um, you know, like when, when the recession happened, like, I guess, 2008 to 2011, 2012, it really was this whole idea of like, a lot of these like middle class Americans in the Midwest, in the South, wherever, who are more blue collared, were just sitting there and they were like, what the fuck? Like, we got like, the rich people are fine, you know, but it's like the people in the middle are just continue to get fucked over by no, like, no matter what right yeah. no matter legislation no matter this and it was just like there was like this deep distrust and these were people who voted for obama in 2008 right these mm-hmm. were people who voted democrat i would say straight ticket democrat for probably the first for probably the last eight years right i don't know if they voted for Kerry well, or obama kind of inherited the recession you know? i agree i agree with you and i agree that like it's not all obama's fault you know what i'm saying like he was kind of like bush put him in a complete shitty position and Obama had to do the best that he could to get out of that position, right? And unfortunately, you know, uh, he did some, I think he did some things with the recession that I personally don't agree with, but, you know, I think to each their own, obviously, it's politics. Um, and it's it like, I think the recession definitely did cause a divide because I think there were these middle American, like the middle, middle class, like middle, middle of the country Americans who were pissed off at the Democrats and pissed off at the way Obama handled the recession. And it got to this point where the anger was so there, they were like, fuck it, I'm gonna just vote for Trump. Like it it got to that point, you know? And also Trump, Trump has this like ability to like galvanize people. He's very good at this. 
where he has this ability to like really get to his base, really galvanize his base and like get them to say like he will say stuff that gets them to like in retaliation say stuff. And like it was more so just like kind of a release of these like emotions that like a lot of people felt but were too scared to say. That's you know a I mean? that's a theory I had for why he won. Like yeah. he kind of just rallied these frustrated people that exactly. wanted to say all this shit but they couldn't and finally he's like you know what i'm gonna say it on the political stage and all these people are like yeah you know what I he's saying that. it why can't i yeah like, that was like all these people just get radicalized exactly you know? and then obviously like you know if trump trump like you know wins the and then obviously there was stuff with hillary as well that was yeah. very suspect and that's why i believe like honestly if joe biden ran in 2016 like there's like exponentially with joe biden he's a less controversial candidate and i believe that's why the democrats wanted to do that you know what i mean like that's why the dnc the, the dnc wanted biden to win this year in 2020 because he's the safe guy he's yeah. the safe house like oh like because they know Biden. he he hasn't done anything that stupid like obviously like there's it, there's a lot of rumors about joe biden you know a lot like, there's controversy behind obviously it. there's that the sexual harassment the stuff Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I'm not saying that Joe Biden is like an uncontroversial politician who skated by, right? Like, no, there there is stuff that he said. I know he said stuff about Indian people. I know he said stuff about uh, Latinos and Black people as well. Americans. Um, and I think he said, uh, he, I don't know the exact quotes, so like, don't you know, ask me to quote them. But like, um, I know he said like really just not so very nice stuff to a lot of people. There's some stuff he said where I see he's trying to appeal to his base, but it's just like, dude, like, what are you saying? Yeah, but I, I will give Joe Biden this. I do think he's like genuinely, like if I were to meet the guy, I think he's a nice guy. I think Joe Biden is a nice guy from what I've seen. I think that's the image because politics is all about image. So you think it's he's an about, asshole? I mean, they have, I don't know, because you really don't know these people until like, I mean, we kind of, it's not politics, but you kind of see it with the Me Too movement. All these actors that are portrayed like like gods, like mm -hmm. like different people, like above us, and then you see what they really are. Yeah. You know, it's all about image. It's all about public perception. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. I I definitely do agree with you on on like that whole idea. But I don't know. It's <laughs> Joe Biden. I I feel like he 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 has done a lot of good. That's what I'll say. Like, and I think there are actions of Joe's where I'm like, I could get with that. You know what I mean? And like, he I has- I get what you were doing. Like, I know. I mean, like, and I support you. Like, I think he has done a lot of good for people. And like, Joe Biden has been a public servant, you know, for 47 years. That is a fact, you know, through through a lot of different time periods. And um, and I think he has done, he has done some bad. I'm not going to sit here and say that he's done all good and he's this great guy, but he's done some some really shitty stuff too. So, um, you know, it is what it is. And it's just like, it feels like Hillary and Clinton, or it, not Hillary and Clinton, but Hillary and Trump uh, all over again, where it's like, you know, yeah. you have one hand this and the other hand this. And it's like, but Biden is like, you have one hand. He's just like, you know, not like he's old. You know, he has been criticized for being unhealthy, quote unquote. I will say though, this time there's a lot less like slander, you know, just kind Absolutely. of thrown around. It feels, but also like, it's weird. This whole election has felt weird because like the backdrop of this whole thing is like, there's a pandemic going on. And it's yeah. like, people don't really give a shit as much this time. You know, like in 2016, the election was like the primary news story for what, five months? Nothing else was happening. It was just election, election, election. Like that's all we were rammed down our throats for five months. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, um, but here we are, 2020, the world's ending. What are you going to do? <laughs> um, Honestly, what blows my mind, I think about this all the time. It's yeah. just like how we got so used to this lifestyle mm -hmm. of like being indoors and all these precautions, all this stuff, like how it feels normal now. Yeah. That's it's crazy. Still on it's like, oh, I got to wear a mask. Like I, I literally have masks in like all my t-shirt pockets now. It's insane. <laughs> like I, I'll, I'll like find, I'll just like be putting on a pair of shorts and I'm like, oh, there's a mask in here. <laughs> And I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> like, and I'm like, this is what is normal now. Like, there's literally yeah. just masks like everywhere, and like, it's, oh, this just insane. Like before, if I like, saw a guy walk into class with a mask, I'm like, oh, dude, this guy has like, like the flu or like something bad, dude. I'm gonna stay away from him. Now it's like, oh, it's everywhere. Exactly, exactly. It's it's so weird, and it's just like, oh, you have a mask on, like, oh, for sure, like we all have masks on. No, now it's like you don't have a mask on, dude. Like, dude. 
What are you doing? You're insane, bro. Yeah. What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> Anti-masker? You don't believe in coronavirus? Like, that's another thing I hate, bro, is wearing a mask is a political statement now. Yeah, that's, like, that was, a, like, why? Like, during the, the, this last debate, um, I think, like, when they were walking on, like, Donald Trump didn't have a mask on. And, tr- like, Joe Biden walked on with a mask for, like, five seconds. I was like, dude, you are not going to, like, what the fuck? Like, you're, it's not like those five seconds are going to prevent you from testing positive for COVID. Yeah. But I was like, the more and more I thought about it, I was like, ah, he's just trying to make a stupid political statement. And, and that is, like, it all comes down to imaging. Because if he didn't have it on, what would the other people be saying? Oh, Fox News. Oh, Biden, who is a proponent masker, is yeah. not wearing his mask. It's what like, is he why doing? Why the fuck has, like, yeah. have masks turned into a political statement? That just boggles my mind. I'm just like, dude, well, it why can't we just... the thing of people saying, it actually, it comes down to actually a bigger issue of freedom versus kind of freedom versus giving into, like, what the government wants. Yeah. You know, freedom versus... What's the word for that? Uh, <laughs> I was never good at SAT vocab. Like, Dude, uh, neither was I. Dude, shout out to Elite. I don't know the word, but it's it comes down to freedom. You know, like what is what exactly does the First Amendment entail? Yeah. You know, what exactly is free? No, I get that. That's and, yeah, and I mean, free will is such like a it's something like you could interpret in a variety of ways you know what i'm yeah. saying like whether like it's it be... what makes this country so great but also it comes down to interpretation yeah and it's like i mean you and like it's just like people i don't understand like why like that's just like something that boggles my mind especially as someone who like likes to believe in the science and the facts i'm just like okay wearing a mask is obviously going to benefit you yeah. why don't you just do it like it like if you get COVID, like you're just destroying yourself. Like it's like, and even if like, I've heard this from so many college students, they're like, dude, if I get it, it don't matter, dude. Like my frat's still running. Like we're, not gonna get sick. <laughs> like, we're, we're gonna die up. And yeah. I was like, no dude, like, it's not about that. It's if you get it, let's say you don't die. Well, let's put aside all the, no, it's the like, studies let's that say... say that there's long-term effects. Let's put that aside. Yeah. Even if you get it, you could trans one, one, you could transmit it to someone who is at risk of it. So let's say yeah. they have asthma. They have a, pre-existing condition it exactly could kill them two if you get hospitalized you're putting an additional stress on the medical system which is already stressed <laughs> accidents aren't going down heart attacks aren't going down all these diseases all these cancers that are still getting treated they are still happening 100%. on top of covid Absolutely. so you're putting this additional stress in the system that doesn't need it so help them out and just don't be don't be stupid you know dude i totally agree with you it's just it's so it's i just find it mind-boggling that there there are a lot of individuals within this country that firmly believe masks are like the fucking way to get like masks are a political statement it's just like how have we turned like public health like keeping everybody safe keeping everybody healthy keeping everybody okay into politics i'm just like these two things should not coincide with one another. And it's like, it's just, to me, that is ridiculous that people think that not wearing a mask is, is some sort of like, you know, like, oh, like I'm with it. Like I'm with the Republicans. It's like, bro, Republican, Democrat, I don't give a fuck. Well, really most Republicans are like, yeah, no shit, wear a mask, but it's just a few people. It's a few, so- it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's Trump's base. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's so his, radical. His hardcore like, base. Yeah. Right? And no, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying like, oh yeah, half of America is anti-mask. I actually think like probably 90% of Americans are pro-mask. Even more, yeah. probably 95, give or take. But the the point is, it's just like, I the, there's such a vocal 5%, you know what I mean? And it's like, they're in your face. They're like, I won't wear a mask. Like, fuck you. Like, on, I go on TikTok and I'm like scrolling through TikTok and I see these fucking just like anti-mask Karens like walk into Starbucks and be like, fuck Black Lives Matter, fuck masks. And I'm like, what? Why? Like, like, why? Like, what like we fuck? get it. You want attention, but why? Yeah, it's like, okay, dude, like just because you didn't get your fucking chai tea latte, like, all right, bro. Like, you wait a couple minutes, like chill, you know? So this is going to be off topic, but yeah. actually... I think the vocal minority, that is a huge part of why we're getting more divided because the news outlets and all these people, they take what the vocal, what the insane 5% say, not the majority, the 5% saying like, oh, like, like tear down the police, like no more police, just 
just the people who run the country, they take what that, they take those opinions and say, oh, look what these dumb liberals are saying. When really most people do not think that. Mm-hmm. And they, both sides do this and they make the other side seem like, ha, look how stupid that guy looks. You want to be like him? <laughs> or you want to be like us? Yeah, stick with us. That's no, what- I, I get you on that 100%, yeah. bro. It's, it's the whole thing is just, uh, it's back to that whole idea of sensationalism. You know, it's just like one side believes the other and the other side believes, you know, this thing and and this is where i wanted to transition into is like this whole idea of misinformation right and i've like talked about this ad nauseum everybody fucking knows like who knows me is like bro you are the biggest fucking misinformation guy i use that word all the time i'm a hoe for the (laughs) word like i'm everything and my thing is like i feel like the news has almost become political or it is political in a lot of ways <laughs> I mean, right when did you realize that dude? No, there okay that sounds just stupid. now <laughs> but like okay but the news has become more of like a the the initial job of the news right the initial job of media in itself is to be a check on the government you know what i mean like the yeah. media is supposed to provide accountability for our elected officials that we elect as citizens it's a circle you know and it's like the media, instead of being accountable, is just being like, instead of being like uh, providing accountability, is being an earpiece or not an earpiece, but a mouthpiece for politicians. And exactly. And I think I've that's what Donald Trump has done. So long, and I, I think that's I've, what Trump has done so beautifully. Sorry to cut you off. But I don't think, I, I think this is what no, Trump has good. done beautifully is just using the media to amplify his message. Whether it be Fox, CNN, MSNBC, he's getting his message out there. People are talking about him. And any press is any press is good press. You're getting attention. And I think he he takes that mentality to the other extreme for sure. I would say it's beyond Trump though. It's both parties are like, hey, you know, we have this base. They they either they they have Fox News on the whole day or CNN on. We can get yeah. our message out to them through these news outlets. So okay, I okay. I want, so usually the conversation tends to be like with my friends when I talk about it, they're like, okay, it's Fox is like the, the conservative one. Right. And MSNBC is the more liberal is very liberal. Yeah. MSNBC, and C- CNN. CNN is supposed to be supposed to be. Okay. I'm saying supposed to be moderate. That has not been the case. No, okay. No my father is the largest consumer of CNN that I've ever seen in my life, bro. This man watches anyone. Anderson. I know all the fucking anchors names because I see them on all the time. Anderson, Anderson Cooper, Chris Cuomo, um, Don Lemon, fucking Aaron Burnett. I hate Don Lemon. I hate that. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's, let's God. talk about that later. Anna, Anna Cabrera, like all of these people, I know every single one of them because I see them on my TV screen 98% of my day, but it's like, dude, CNN is not moderate, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care who you are. CNN is not moderate for the people in the back. It is, I would argue, okay, I think MSNBC is really liberal. CNN's I, kind of trended in that direction. No, I man. think they're farther than MSNBC, really. Really? Because the just the, I will pull up this, this headline I saw on my phone. It depends. Let me pull this up. For me, I, I think it depends. I think... CNN is, um, it's, it like, yes, yeah, I, I found, I found the, I found the title. Joe Biden's oil comments made headlines after last night's debate, but Trump's denial of reality is what matters most. Oh my. If you don't see what's wrong with that title, then you have been brainwashed. <laughs> it, it, this is, people think that like, oh, brainwashing is like in the movies, they stick some like, like thing on your head and, yeah. and then your, your head is different. No, this is brainwashing. See, but this is my problem. Constantly forcing an opinion onto you so you become what they want. Yeah. You're in this echo chamber. Mm -hmm. But I think this is my main problem with the news is like this whole idea of like, okay, so I'm going to use a little analogy here. So like on ESPN and like Fox Sports, you know how you have these like sports talk shows, right? Yeah. Like First Things First, The Herd, Undisputed, First Take, The Jump right so all of these different people and you have all these different talking heads on these pod on these shows right like Stephen a smith max kellerman shannon sharp skip bayless skip. goes on right skip god I love shannon. <laughs> anyway um but and they all have different opinions on sports right yeah and so like if you look at it like right Stephen a is is very much like uh, you know like he has his particular things that he likes and then you have max who has his particular opinions which i've disagree with 98 percent of what he says um and then you have colin coward who says and it's like news has turned into that 
it's like instead of Jordan and LeBron, which are like, okay, like you can have your an opinion on that and talk about it. The news has turned into these talking heads having their own particular opinions and just like going on with that. You know what I mean? Like you have Chris, Definitely. you have Chris Cuomo, you have Rachel Maddow, you have Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, Don Lemon. All these guys have their own opinions and they're trying to just amplify their opinion and tell you what they mean. And it's just like, bro, I don't care about your opinion. The news is for me to learn information unbiasedly. So tell me the facts and don't tell me your opinion. But every exactly. single show that we watch, every single show on primetime on CNN is talk is one person's opinion. It's Anderson Cooper's opinion. It's Chris Cuomo's take. It's Don Lemon's take. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about your takes, right? I care about like sports takes because I want to hear multiple different perspectives. I don't care about your takes. I want to hear like what is going on in the world. And I feel like there's so much less of that. The news isn't about education anymore. It's about instilling fear. It's about instilling entertainment within the consumers. And I think that's just bullshit. I think there's a Mark Twain quote you're going to love. If you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. But if you read the newspaper, you're misinformed. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what society has turned Mm -hmm. into. I mean, unfortunately, I mean, like, fortunately for Mark Twain, honestly, like in those times, it was just the newspaper. But like, obviously, there were opinion based newspapers, of course. But the cool part about the newspapers was they couldn't really like, yes, you could get newspapers and they would have like certain political affiliations. But like the New York Times, the Chicago Tribune, these are all like newspapers that weren't built with political affiliations. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they, they have, they're just reporting facts. They're reporting like, okay, this is what is going on with China. This is what is going on with the U S like blah, blah, blah. These yeah. are facts. Take them as you will. But now it's like Don Lemon is Don Lemon should be telling me the news, you know, like Don Lemon should be saying, this is what's happening with Corona. But Don Lemon is saying, this is what's happening with Corona. Let me tell you my thoughts on it. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck about your thoughts, Don. I, I may love you as a person. I don't really know you as a person, but I don't care about your thoughts. Give me the facts. That's yeah. it. I don't care about your take. And like, I think we're missing that in news media today. I think there's a well, lot of people the, that want to get there. The idea that journal, journalism was founded on is that we provide unbiased news. We just give you the news. You take that and process it how you want. Exactly. And now it's become, let me feed you. Let you tune into CNN every day. And let me feed you an opinion. So you become just like what we want. Right. A shill. For sure. It's, a, it's really an echo chamber. I think echo chambers are so prevalent nowadays. It's like people on their, let's say on Instagram or Facebook, they only follow and interact with people that think like them. So they're constantly bouncing ideas. Hey, dude, you know what I think about China? Boom. The people bounce it back. Yeah, I agree. Boom, 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 boom. All the ideas bounce back and everyone's thinking the same. Yeah. And this brainwashes people into thinking that, wait, everyone agrees with me. I must be right. And yeah. if you live your 10 years like that, that's what your reality is based on. Mm-hmm. That your opinion is the only correct one. And this and- is why nowadays we can't really have a dialogue, you know? Like a Absolutely. podcast like this, a lot of people are going to hate it. <laughs> because we're just having a discussion. A lot of people will hate it. I mean, I think it's just like, that goes back to, you were talking about social media. And social media, I mean, it just creates an echo chamber. The echo chamber grows bigger. You know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of people follow pages. They like posts. They, they, you know, they tweet at certain things. They retweet certain things. And so it forces them into this, like, that way the algorithm works is the algorithm is going to recommend content that you you like to, you subscribe to, this, that, and the mm-hmm. other, right? And so it's going to be built towards your opinion, skewed towards whatever opinion you're at. And it's only going to show you stuff from there, but you don't see the other side and you don't see a middle ground. And that's what fucking sucks in today's society is like journalism is entertainment. And it's like, this is fucking ridiculous. Like it's, it's gotten to the point where it's like, people are more so entertained by Chris Cuomo than Chris Cuomo reporting the facts. And that's unfortunate to me. And yeah. (laughs) That's it. It's just more about the social media part, but it's just pathetic. So we did like, yeah. And like, how did we get here? Yeah. How did we get here? You know, I used to watch, um, or like, like people used to watch like, like friends. Oh, like, great TV show. It's always sunny in Philadelphia for like fun. You know, now we're watching CNN. Oh, look at what Trump said. Like, let me, let That's me laugh what here. my dad says every day at the dinner table. It's like, oh, guys, did you see what Donald Trump said today? And I was like, That's dude, not- I don't <laughs> care. 
Like he probably said some stupid shit once again. That's my dad, dude. Dude, and this is all like just people. It's just like this is the conversation at the dinner table. It's like, oh, you hear what Biden said? You hear what Trump said? You hear about the election? It's like, I want to hear. It's like it's gotten to the point where it's like I want to hear less and less about the election. I don't care as much anymore. Yeah. And I care more so just like about maintaining my sanity. And like so that's the fact why I, was, I talk about fantasy. I was football. more entertained by Thursday night football. The <laughs> NFC least. The <laughs> NFC least. The battle of the two NFC least. For people who don't know that. sports, uh, the Thursday night football game this week was uh, two of the worst teams in football. And uh, there were a lot of people who were watching that game over uh, the debate. The election, which is... Which shouldn't surprising. be the case. Should not. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it is the case, but... That's the state you know, we're at. So what yeah, do? it is. It is 2020. So people are watching Thursday night football. Uh, but they can't complain. It was a good game. Okay. I mean, we'll, we my can... dad was even like Nihar, put the game back on. I mean, put the <laughs> election back on. This this game sucks. Guess what? Evan Ingram drops a pass. Okay. Eagles Jesus. score. We don't. They go okay, back. I'm not, they this, score this again. This podcast is not a sports recap episode. This will be a sports podcast in three episodes. I promise you. No, it won't. So I'll okay. make it one. We're talking about questions that are important to society. All right. Uh, you think sports questions aren't? Okay, LeBron they are. All right. Le- I'm the LeBron biggest fucking Jordan. sports fan here. Bay Area sports. <laughs> all- Jesus. Bay Area sports You're all the Drake way. Fan, though. Baby, you my everything. You all that. Okay. No, I'm gonna do oh, that. Stop. But, no, 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 no. Okay. Okay. But. Um, you don't want to get copyrighted, bro. Okay, yeah, that's true. I'm gonna <laughs> get fucking sued by Drake by the first episode. It's gonna suck. I'm gonna be canceled OBO, for he, real, he for real. Your door, hey, Nuge, uh, you copy my lyrics? You're like, uh, Drake? Drake? Champagne Poppy? Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> he just pulls up in his in his um Aston Martin, just like, hey, take that down, bro. Just yeah, and I'm gonna be like, I don't know, bro. Maybe not. Like, anyway, wait, wait, anyway, wait, wait, back wait, on wait, track. Just call back, on track. Oh, back on track. Back on track. You're we not could... gonna believe who I met, dude. What? What, are, you gonna t- are you going to tell the Hassan Minaj story about how you met Hassan Minaj? Oh, I didn't just meet Hassan. Okay, wait. Okay, we'll, we'll go off. We'll go off topic on the podcast. No, 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 no. Quick. You you but, brought it up. I'm going to finish. Okay. This. Yeah. No, we're going off topic. Uh, yeah, so yeah, we're gonna yeah. uh, Nihar's going to tell you guys the story of how he met Hassan Minaj. Yeah, Hassan for Minaj. all those Indian brown boys out there. Yep, this man did meet Hassan Minaj. Okay, you want to go with your story? Go okay, ahead. so I'm at the Crunch. I'm a senior. I'm getting ripped. Okay. Crunch is a local gym in the Bay Area. Which, like, every brown boy goes to. A lot of brown boys. You know, they're like, dude, you want to go to the Crunch today? Dude, I'm crazy. I hate the legs, bro. <laughs> yeah, that, that's all the brown boys are. But yeah. I'm Except me. I'm a, I'm a skinny noodle. But, yeah. Continue. You're skinny? No, dude. Dude, I'm jacked. I'll take it. You're ja- yeah. Shwole, shwole <laughs> news. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. But um, I'm in the Crunch. You know, I'm doing, my, I'm doing my workouts. And I see this tall Indian dude. I'm like, wait. I've seen him before. This is pre-corona. And then I flash back two this years ago to when this guy, this guy showed me Homecoming King. I did. I did. You show showed Homecoming it to me. King. Yeah. I did. Yeah. And I was Homecoming like, wait, King's is that great. Hassan? Hassan Minaj? I walk Hassan over, Bhai? I'm like, Hassan <laughs> If you haven't seen Homecoming King, you have to watch. Yeah. We're going to talk about Homecoming King on a later episode. So uh, stay tuned for that. But yeah, um, definitely do. This, this might get the podcast taken down, but Hassan Bai, eat my dust, immigrant. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny people that anyway. haven't seen it will not will be like what What's but yeah saying? nihara has met hassan minaj at the gym I, yeah, let me so wait oh okay. we're getting so off topic go, go, so go. i'm doing my workout i see him i'm like hold up is that him i walk up to him like yo son he's like yeah man what's up i was like oh dude i was like we we're talking for a bit and then i got a picture with him walked away day was great the next day i'm on the leg press you know i'm just doing my thing like oh, oh listening to my drake you know that's when um you said you hated drake. okay anyway continue see i'm i'm a closeted drake fan i will i will be i'll put this out in this oh podcast. i'm out of the closet i've been out of the closet since 2009 so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but i'm sitting on the leg press doing my thing and this dude walks up like yo what's up nihar i'm like look up like what that's Hustle him. Knows my name dude <laughs> i was like i was like what's up Hustle? he's like he's like what's up dude like how you doing i'm like i was in shock i was like he recognized me he recognized me, not the other way around. He walked yeah. up to me and said, yo, Nihar, how are you doing? Mind blown. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, like, we're from a part of the Bay Area. We're from the South Bay. So in Cupertino, like, no one fucking expects, like, any celebrity to, like, walk around. But Hassan and yeah. just, like, pulled up to the gym randomly. It was very weird. 
Uh, I like still, the most we, you're gonna see is like Jimmy Garoppolo walking down Los Gatos. I don't even think Jimmy Garoppolo would even come. Kyle Shanahan. I haven't even seen Kyle Shanahan. It was it was weird. Um, but uh, but nah. Um, Hasan Minaj like was in the South Bay, which was I mean probably one of our biggest accomplishments, even though we didn't do anything. Uh, um, my biggest accomplishment. Your biggest accomplishment. I met him. I, I peaked because I have a friend that met Hassan, so. And at the time, I was, like, trying to be a writer. So I was like, Nihar, send him some of my stuff, dude. <laughs> I was like, no way, dude. I'm a, it's like, nah, dude. <laughs> no, nah. That friendship's mine. But uh, anyway, back to the actual topic at hand. I think Hassan Bai would be disappointed that we were talking about him instead of politics. So No, bro, we should get him on this podcast. I think he'd love it. <laughs> if Hassan Minaj hit me up and was like, hey, bro, let me, uh, let me get on this podcast. I'll be Bro, just tweeted him, yo, dude, I met you like three years ago. Like, want to hop in a podcast? You should tweet at him off your burner. <laughs> no, off my main. I'll just be like, yo. Oh, you got a main oh. now? Ooh. I mean, I, I really don't. Ooh, he's got a main now. Anyway. Ooh, hey, follow me on Twitter. Okay. Can you hear me okay, by the way? Poppy. Huh? Can you hear me good? Yeah, dude, your quality okay. is good. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Okay, so the third topic that I wanted to really talk about was I was like, okay. I was thinking about this, like, yeah, a couple of days ago. I was like, so, like, during the debate, and I was just watching the debates, and I was like, what do people actually, like, give a shit about? Like, it, I, I feel like, because a lot of people, you know, like Biden and Trump, they're talking, you know, COVID, they're talking, you know, economy, foreign policy, this, that, and the other. And a lot of times for like the average American, like they, they use a lot of words that are just confusing, right? Even I get confused sometimes. I'm like, I'm, I'm not saying that like I'm super smart or anything, but I, yeah, I get very confused by like what they say. They're like talking all these things. And like, I feel like a lot of Americans are just like, bro, this is like too deep for me. Like, I can't do this. And I get that. 100 percent so i was just thinking i was like what do voters people who are voting in this election in 2020 actually care about and i was like and i came to this conclusion that there are such like there are very like macro versus micro ways of thinking you know what i mean and i feel like as a voter you can think of both i think there's the micro perspective as a voter that you can think of oh like how am i going to get bread on the table for my family how am i going to uh, how is this how is this election going to affect where i work how is this affection or not affection election going to affect my uh my social relationships this and like how is this election taxes. going to affect me as an individual taxes all of that right and then there are more macro ways of thinking and i i've come to this conclusion i hear me out this is a little theory i got um that i think like the wealthier that you are the higher tax bracket you're in the more macro you tend to think because i feel like and i think so the, the more larger scale you think i think okay so i think the more that you the more money you have right the more money that you you have you have the more macro you tend to think and i think that's that's not necessarily a bad thing but a lot also a lot of people would disagree with me because they're like no i think it's the opposite but i do think that to a certain extent the richer you are, the less you have to worry about taxes, the less you have to worry about all of this stuff. Like you're not going broke anytime soon. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure. You may have to pay a couple extra dollars for taxes, a couple hundred extra dollars for taxes. But if you are in a certain tax bracket, there's no way you're going to go down. You know what I mean? Well, anyone can, can lose their money at any time, but for them, it's about maintaining that wealth. Obviously. Because yeah. if you're in that upper bracket, you want to maintain and if, if not go up in wealth. Cause yeah you're around people like that mm -hmm. and everyone's trying to like oh so you got a new bentley oh only a bentley i got a rolls like it's like whoa <laughs> so now it's all this this competitive nature with them you anyway. know um, but like but yeah no i get that for sure but okay. i would say also i think on a macro scale too. you mean like larger like i'm thinking like micro is like i'm thinking about myself i'm thinking about my family macro is thinking about Oh, what is the greater impact that this election is going to have? What but I would say that generally, not the super wealthy care more about that because they're. That's like what I was saying. That, I, that, that's the and, counter argument. Yeah. Where it's like the super wealthy really just don't give a shit about that. But like, I do think to some extent you have to have some economic like to an extent. I think it is very rare to see an individual. And this is just my opinion. I think it's pretty rare to see individuals that are like not the richest but also like not the poorest but also like give a shit about like 
everybody else. You know what I mean? Besides themselves. And I think that's just like the fact I, – I have this theory. I think a lot of people have said, Anuj, you're wrong. And I think it's like human beings are inherently greedy. Human beings inherently want what's best for them and the people that they care about. And right? that's just a survival instinct. Like people yeah. are like, no, like, no, that's so bad. Why do you think like that? I'm like, no, it's survival. It's not bad. You know, like I, it is what it is. Obviously, I'm not saying go be selfish and go fucking hoard things for yourself. No, don't like be a good person. Like do what you think is right. You know what I'm saying? But like I'm saying that like most voters, I think, think more micro than they do macro. Mm -hmm. and i think yes there are a few but and i think this is also like we get this impression because we live in the bay where it's like oh like in the bay area you know there are a lot of people who are thinking very macro like if you look at it you know there are a lot of people that have very different perspectives on what the issues are and that you know we have been blessed to been educated at some of the best schools in the country and you know we have more of this macro perspective Whereas, you know, if you talk to people in, you know, who grew up much more middle class, like in the middle, in the Midwest, in the South, they're thinking about how am I going to get my paycheck on the table? How am I, because a lot of Americans are living, you know, day to day, month to month, you know? right? Like yeah. paycheck to paycheck. And that's fine. But like, it's their way of thinking is shifted for sure. Right. And that's like what I was just like thinking about recently. And it's, it's, I feel like macro versus micro is this whole thing that's, it's just, it's a philosophical thing that's never going to end. Like there, you're going to have big picture thinkers. You're going to have people who think um, about themselves. And that's unfortunately something that's like never going to go away. No matter what society you live in, no matter where you live, there are going to be people who think big. They're the big dreamers. And they're the people who are just like, I'm content with my life. I'm just trying to live my life. I'm trying to keep the people in my life happy. And there's no like problem with either way, you know? I think but, to an extent, everyone is thinking micro. It's like, okay, these, yeah. this tax plan and this plan. It's like plan the bottom and, line. It's yeah. Like, at the end of the day, like this tax plan may help underprivileged communities around me. But if I'm someone who's, you know, wealthier, I'm like, okay, at the end of the day, like, am I going to get fucked over? Like that is a thought that does cross people's minds, unfortunately. You know? Well, it's, it's just kind of natural. Cause it like, is. Yeah, if absolutely. you have a candidate that is, all for your social beliefs and everything, but they're like, oh, and by the way, you person that um is in X X tax bracket, you are gonna be paying the highest taxes. Then they're like, whoa, like yeah, that's exactly the conversation you, like, I was I having with my uh, that's uh, that's the conversation I was having with my mom today. I mean, yeah, like, and she was like, oh, like I'm, you know, here, here, and here socially, and like I was like, okay, whatever, 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 and then she was like, bro, they're gonna tax me more. Like, eh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, yeah, like, eh, like that. I don't like the high tax, and I'm like, I get it. You know, it's like, it's that whole thing where you're trying to balance yourself versus other people. And it's like, and like my dad on the other hand is like, listen, I'm willing to take the hit if I get to benefit others in the community and I have to get paid a little bit more for taxes, that so be it. But my mom is under the impression is like, bro, like I've struggled to get here. I'm an immigrant. I'm not paying more taxes than I have to. And it's like, I understand. And they're both, both entitled to that. They're belief. both entitled to their own mm -hmm. opinion. And like, sure, one is right and one is wrong. Or not, I'm not, not one is right as one is wrong, but like, they think they're right and they think and one of them thinks the other is wrong but it's okay to have multiple opinions and that goes back to another philosophical question of not like philosophical but like in terms of just like your opinions are like i feel like in today's society we aren't allowed to have opinions in some extent you know what i mean like yeah if i if i'm able if i like say an unpopular opinion i'm gonna get trashed on twitter i'm gonna get trashed on facebook my friends are gonna be like what the fuck is wrong with you but it's like why have we gotten to that stage where open dialogue almost is not inclusive like that well, this is really we're going back to the um the echo chamber idea you yeah know? because if you're so used to if you and nuj are surrounded like in that room only yeah and you're just you're oh, you're only with people that have the same ideas as you you will be conditioned to believe that everyone in the world like humans are not good at large-scale thinking we cannot fathom true. True. all the different beliefs in the world right so mm -hmm. if i'm only surrounded if all of my friends if all of my family think one way i'm gonna think everyone thinks one way i mean until bro, that's that how we one guy up, comes though. along that thinks differently yeah. and that will shatter my paradigm that's how we will grew not be up. able to comprehend that that's how we grew up we grew up in a society where everyone was just liberal 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 like that was, that was the society. Like I grew up in, like, I still remember like fucking, what was it? 2007, 2008. Like I was like, 
hey mom, like who do we vote for? I was just like curious because I was a little kid. And I was like, who are you voting for? Like, why do you vote for it? And my mom was like, we vote straight ticket Democrat every time. And I was like, okay. Okay. I guess I that's, it. that's the way it is. And I firmly no, I said, get it. I still believed that we, like I believed Democrats were right and Republicans were wrong probably until I was like 16, something like that, until I got to high school. And I started like doing oh, that was research. A good time because that was the Hillary that was Trump 2016 election. until yeah. 2016. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, you know the Republican candidate that was running in 2016 was a shithead named Donald Trump. But, <laughs> but um, but like you know, I was like I did more research, I did more things, and I was like, okay, like I agree with some stuff that Republicans say, absolutely, and I disagree with a lot of I, I disagree with a lot of Democratic ideas. Yeah. And I think political parties, and I'm, I'm going to go go back to this later, they put you in a box in a lot of ways. It's like, okay, I'm, you know, you could, you're either believe in this set of ideas or this set of ideas. And that's the problem with the two party system, I think, is they're putting you in a box with specific ideas and you're like, hold up. Like if I vote Democrat, I'm agreeing with this set of ideas, but I don't like this idea. And it's like, if I vote Republican, I'm voting with this set of ideas. I don't like these ideas. And it's like, there's no middle ground. There's no, like, I want to be in this party. And that's why I think multiple parties is a great solution to this, like, death of democracy in a lot of ways. And, like, I 100% agree with that because that's the frustration I have. Like, I'm an independent. I consider myself an independent. But I am, for economic policies, I'm conservative leaning. And for social, I'm kind of just in the middle. And the problem is, is that they're tearing both of my beliefs apart. They're like, hey, you believe in this, 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 my side. You believe in this, that side. Like one example is gun control. Like I am all for the Second Amendment. If you are qualified, have at it. Get whatever you want. Get a saw, get an M16, buy whatever you want. M16? But I also believe in are gun you pro, control. Are you pro M16? Assault well, rifles? It's, uh, it's AR-15, but... I go back and forth on the... Uh, on like the, the assault uh, rifle? The thing. semi-automatics and assaults. Yeah. Well, I think because that that side of me is libertarian. Like, really, if you want a fully automatic machine gun, go ahead and buy. You know, you're you're entitled to that as long as you are qualified to handle it. I agree. And that is where the gun control thing comes in. I'm pro Second Amendment, but I think there has to be checks and balances, and there has to be some element of control. Where are you qualified? Do you pass all these X Y Z tests? For sure. Okay, you can have it. Otherwise, no, that makes sense. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I agree with and you. And that's that. where, like, even in um, some discussions in class, like in my freshman year, I was like, like, you know, you know, everyone kind of in my school is more liberal leaning. And I was kind of like, yeah, I support the Second Amendment. And people just looked at me like, dude, what? I was like, yeah, like, I support it. They're like, how dare you go against gun control? I'm like, no, like, I'm pro both. You know, what do your parents, what do your, uh, what do your parents think? Because I'm going to tell what my parents think. So surprisingly, my both my parents agree with me, you know, they're like, I, I get, it took them a while, but they understand like, you know what, like we live in a privileged place where the police department is less than a minute away from your house. If there's ever, yeah. ever trouble, but if you are in the inner city, if you are in the country there, the police aren't going to get to you for an hour. So you have to, you have to stay strapped. You have to take care of your family. And I get that, but there should also be checks to make sure you don't just some like, some random person just walks into a gun store. Ten minutes later, they come out with a air semi-automatic, right? Yeah. And are they mentally stable? I think that's for me. That that's too. a big one, right? Because mental health and gun control go so hand in hand. You know, I feel like to a certain extent, you have to be this type of person who's like you have to. I think there needs to be some psychological component to those tests. You know what I mean? But I do think it. Can, this is where like. I get worried about them taking it too far of like, oh no, you can't have it, you, but you can. Because- No, I get it. Yeah, I can see health, it. What mental disorders are considered bad enough, quote For unquote, sure, for sure. To prohibit you from having a gun. And I think like, honestly, it's, it's gonna have to come down to like, I, I feel like this is what it would come down to is just like getting psychiatric evals before you get a gun. Like, and having the medical professionals be like, okay, this person is fit to have a gun. This person isn't fit to have a gun. And but just like, where, where they but draw obviously the line, the, that is the, debate. the economics behind it is like, like, obviously like I'm speaking out of my ass. I don't really have like the economics. I don't have a proposal, any of that. Like, I'm not sitting here saying that that's a feasible thing, but I'm saying like in an ideal society, I do think psychiatrists would play a role in, in making sure that, um, 
the people who have guns in society are fit to have guns. Yeah. Yeah. Because Absolutely. then you have people like the the guy in the Las Vegas shooting who is clearly out of his mind. Absolutely. And Sandy Hook and Parkland, like yeah. these are all horrible things that happened. And these guys were able to just I th- I think the Sandy Hook guy actually got the guns from his mom. Um I don't know about But he was Parkland. clearly out of But he was his out of it. Was his just... mental space was just ridiculous. Like it was it wasn't ridiculous. So like, this actually to isn't related it. to the original subject of democracy, but what do you think about like school shootings and the the psyche behind the shooters? Like, what do you think school about that? School shootings. I mean, I think it's it's very interesting in a lot of ways. Um, it's sad, first of all, right? Obviously, I, yeah. I mean, it's tragic the fact that like you know kids. It's it's tragic that like you know this is something that I think our kids are going to have to worry about is that like, because you've seen it, it's happened in like the most like white suburban communities, like majority Stoneman Douglas High School was in Parkland, Florida, which is like a majority like white Hispanic suburb and it's relatively affluent. So like these aren't, these aren't things that are happening in, you know, very, um, what's it called? Like, it, like inner city neighborhoods, like it's happening everywhere. And that's yeah. what I think is the concerning part, right? Sandy Hook was in like a rich Connecticut suburb. like. I it's, think the the scariest part is that there's no gain. You know, yeah. it's not like a robbery. It's where just you can an, get it's money. a loss it's, for everybody it's about involved. Revenge. It's about something that goes deeper into the human into the human condition of these people that did all this stuff to me that bullied me. I'm gonna get back at them. Absolutely, you know, like, and that's scary. Yeah, that's yeah. so. It's it's unsettling to think about, like mm-hmm. how someone can become so just beaten down by society that they. That in their head, it's logical that, hey, Anuj, you did this thing to me. I go up to your school and shoot everyone in it. Yeah. How does that and process in I someone's think, head? You know, it's, and this is like interesting. Um, I don't know if there's like a study that's been done, but like I've seen like most of the school shooters that I've seen are men. And well, they, men, we have to st- high levels of testosterone. We are more violent. Right. We, and I'm not sa- like, but like, I'm also saying that like my point was is like men and mental health is like a whole separate like men's mental health and we've talked about this on several occasions is is something that is not talked about enough within society and the whole idea of like you know you got to be a man you got to do this and the toxic masculinity and i think it definitely does play a role within that you know what i'm saying like i think that i I don't think toxic masculinity is real i think that's just like the bro dude like super try hard alpha wannabe you know yeah but but i mean okay. i do think men's mental health is not talked about enough yeah because our suicide rate is we're five times more likely to kill ourselves than a woman that is so disturbing absolutely that is horrible and that's but it doesn't like, get scary. any attention because it's just like you're a man man up put your head down you feel sad go to the gym yeah you feel you always oh, still feel, you feel sad, sad take a, a nap pill. yeah you pop, feel sad pop a Xanax, you know it's like yeah and it's like we aren't allowed to show emotion and i feel like with a lot of these school shooters right it's like they i feel like i don't know because i I'm, i personally have not looked into it as deep as maybe i should by saying this but i do think that the, to a certain extent there is like this thing of like i don't know how to express my emotions you know and like well, so i i've done a few presentations on it obviously it's not we're not talking like harvard research level yeah, but yeah, yeah i've i've done quite a few presentations on this and what i get from um like i read through through there's um i forgot which news source published it but they published the diary of the two of the two um columbine school shooters mm-hmm. and you just see how just like it it's deranged. I will not even deny that. But you see, there's like, it's sad because these people are like, oh, like, you know, I walk into class and they say like, sup nerd and like push me. And like, I go to get lunch. They slam my food. Like I'm just yeah. walking with the lunch tray. And they I think like my food, like why, what did I do to deserve that? Yeah. And that victim mentality is what creates this underdog idea of like, you know what? Let me rise up against these people that bullied me for so long. For sure. Let me get a gun. And show them who's boss. That is what they're thinking. And it is so sad and disturbing. It's very sad. And there's actually a TED Talk. I would highly recommend like everyone go watch. It's um, it's like the Columbine uh, school shooter's mom. And she was like, my son was a school shooter. And she's, oh, I think. She, I've seen that. It's yeah. a very good TED Talk. If you haven't seen it. It's, very sad. Uh, uh, it's Jamie, also very disappointing. Hmm? Jamie, pull that up. 
<laughs> but uh, only only the Rogan Bros. Little little that. reference, the Rogan. Uh, I actually to Rogan. took me a second to uh, to get a reference, but yeah, no, that. it's it's a crazy <laughs> TED talk. I would highly recommend if you if you go watch it. Um, yeah, but it's she basically talks about like how she had no idea really to be honest that like her kid was like this you know like to her like her kid was just like a normal 16 year old boy who liked you know video games and and just you know was quiet made the matrix right? yeah yeah, yeah he's like a he quiet was, kid. he's a quiet kid minded his own business got good grades in school like you know that's what it was but in reality obviously all of this stuff was going on on the side and I'm not saying in no way do I blame her as a parent that this happened. Like, it's it's not her fault at all. Because as a parent, that would be so heartbreaking to just you think your kid's okay and just shoots up the school next day. I don't know what goes through your head. Yeah. And it's like, like when you've, like, I think at first you'd be like, oh my gosh, like, when you see that in the news, you're like, is my kid okay? But if you find out that your kid is responsible Your kid that, did it. That's, you know, that's got to be a crazy thing to deal with. And, and like, especially when the kid is, let's say he shoots himself or he, it's suicide by cop, like you are now held responsible. Every parent of those victim is like, Hey, you brought that damn kid up. Yeah. It is your fault. It's like, let me see. I, I, don't, I don't know if the, uh, if the Columbine kids like were suicide by cop, like, no, they, um, or they, were killed they, arrested? Themselves. they, oh, killed, they killed themselves. themselves. Yeah. Okay. It was disturbing how they did it too. They're just like tonight. What was the exact quote? We don't have to get into graphic detail. But, but there's a final quote that they yeah. said. It's like, where is it? So it was Eric Harrison, Dylan Klebold. That was a name. Yeah. It's tragic, though. School shooting yeah. is fucking tragic. Well, they... I can't find the quote, but they mm. killed themselves in the library. Yeah, that's because that's just... they they knew they're they're dead. Mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. in their eyes, you know, they felt like martyrs. They felt like, oh, we're the the little guy rising up against the the bullies, you know? Right. Because like everyone that's bullied is like, damn, like I wish I could get back then. But mm -hmm. this was just like a this. weird, very like obviously wrong way to do it. Yeah, like but... shooting them up was like whoa. Like... And I think that's just like that's something like unfortunately like we need to stress more in our society is just more like healthy ways to cope and i'm like i'm not saying that like we could have prevented this but like i think that that the we need to emphasize men's mental health within schools within society and, i think it's just there's a lot of changes that need to we need to normalize therapy i think that's a big one yeah because right now it's like oh yeah. you go to the dude like it's like are, dude you go to therapy you, you're, you're weird okay? and like i'm saying okay? that like as a guy like it's weird like in high school and stuff like if you were to say like if you go to therapy you get your ass beat you get made fun of because i remember like, challenge day in monta vista everyone's like dude you go to challenge day dude that's whack dude they just talk about their feelings like yeah. if you really think about it like if i know one dude that went he was like dude i, I cried i was like and this was a football player i was like dude what yeah we had this something similar to cry at, um at, we had something similar at our at our high school a toga that. Uh, breaking down it was my senior year we had this thing called breaking down the walls it was very similar to like challenge day same but idea more, on like more of like a macro scale and man i like almost cried like <laughs> i think i did cry i don't remember but it was like it was a pretty crazy experience because it's like it puts things into perspective you know what i mean it's like because you think wow. that guy's like oh that's the tough football player that's the a plus student but yeah but really you know and like, down, like there was like the, the, psyche, the, cross the like, dude the cross the line activity i don't know if you've heard of it but it's like basically like they they uh the moderator is like cross the line if blah 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 and so like they, they get like they start out with like cross the line if you have a driver's license they start out easy and like normal yeah and then they get into like cross the line if blah 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 like it just really just heartbreaking stuff and like you know you, when you see people you cross see the, the line it's like bro we were homie like or like we're friends like i had no clue or mm -hmm. like you know it's like dude i've like i've like this experience happened where it was like one of um one of my friends from high school like his best friend crossed the line on a suicide question and he was shocked he was like what like these kids were tight too you know what i'm saying like yeah it's it's just it's crazy like it was just a mind trip and it was one of those like experiences that you won't forget because it's just like it's putting things into perspective that like it people may seem a certain way people may you know have this perfect life they may have a great family whatever but you don't know what's going on 
and yeah, like, like things like just, I haven't gone through something like that, but just yeah, that's that's just heartbreaking, you know. Like that's your best friend, and for him mm-hmm. to cross the line of that, it's like, dude, like I, yeah. I didn't. You kind of it's feel like, helpless. You're like, I didn't know. I didn't know exactly. And like, what happens if you did, dude? I would feel guilty the rest of my life. Yeah, that's on me. Mm-hmm. You know, for it's, sure. It's very sad, and I think men's mental health. We have to start it at a young age. Absolutely. Because. I like this is also what I talked about in my in one of my presentations in Merced. It was on the school shootings, and in the opinionated part of it, I talked about the effect of pharmaceutical medication on kids, and what it is doing to them, and how it is totally warping their minds. And if you look at a lot of the school shooters, a lot of them had ADD, um, depression, um, mm-hmm. insomnia, but they were given like literally they're given some of the strongest meds in the market, like Adderall XR 200 milligram. Like what? Like crazy stuff. Yeah. Like why this idea that you can just be fed a pill and like go study or, or feed a pill, go play sports. No, that's, that's messed up. Have the kid talk it out with the actual counselor. You I mean, know, have them. I, I, I do disagree with you in some sense that like, I do think pills can help. I do think that like medication can help, but I do think that there is other work that needs to be done. You know what I'm saying? Like pills can be a compliment to. But it's the, it's the long term effect and what it does to their brain. We don't know. Absolutely. As a kid, like if yeah. this is a 12 year old kid, if you give him Adderall XR, who knows what it's going to do to them? Mm-hmm. And what happens when they get off the medication? Mm-hmm. One sure. of my psychology professors. I think. In, uh, I think what is, you uh, what you mean is like more so like less more of like the misdiagnosis. There's a lot of misdiagnosis. A lot of mis like a yeah. kid's a bit jumpy. He focuses a bit. Oh, he has ADD. Give him Adderall. Yeah, you know, and it's vitamin. like there's a lot of like misdiagnosis and more so like we need to like do a better job of like evaluating situations. Yeah, rather than just you know giving like the strongest thing on the market because i don't think if you, if you i think if you bring the strongest thing on the market i don't think it helps you yeah and clearly it, it doesn't help these kids because they just end up more frustrated and when they get off the meds they can't process what is yeah. happening and that is when it leads to these tragic shootings and i think uh to transition back to like this whole idea of like uh, democracy and politics and elections and stuff i think honestly like i i'm just like su- more and more like i'm very surprised that like politicians just continue to kind of neglect and not bring up mental health like i think it's 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 something that is getting talked about i would say within the greater course of our society within the citizens but in terms of like the elected officials like it's still something that is just so like under the rug it's crazy because it's something that they don't understand and that they can't sway yeah because you you look at all these issues like you look at a school shooting happens they blame video games like what how is a mm-hmm. video out of video game or a movie affected? Why don't you talk about what is going on with that dude's head? Why he posted on forums saying he right. wants to kill himself and that he hates women. He's posting all that stuff. Why don't you talk about that? But no, you go for the low hanging fruit and just say, oh, video games are a problem. And you see this. It's focusing on issues. like the psychology of people, right? The psychology yeah. of why humans behave a certain way. And there's a lack of that um within within society and yeah. i think there there's a lack of understanding the fundamental issues and it's more so politicians wanting to tackle issues at the surface level but not digging into okay why did this man shoot up the school right why did this mm-hmm. person shoot up the school was it because of this was it because of the gun laws yes it was because of the gun laws but why did he even think about doing that in the first place that's what that's led huge, him that's what blows my mind like a like Okay, like there's people that say, oh, like the gun didn't pull the trigger like he did. So like, don't do anything with the guns. But like, it's like, wait, let's, let's, that, what they're saying is like kind of weird, but like, let's break that down. You mm-hmm. need a person behind it to pull that trigger. That thing won't pull itself. Right. So let's look at what made the person think about, hey, let me go to Regnart. All those people that bullied me. Poor Regnart. Yeah. Don't. Well, that, that was just their right. <laughs> that was literally just, Columbine, right, no, our right. elementary school. Columbine, you Parkland. Know. You know what makes them think like that? That is what we need to focus on. That is so. I agree with you, one hundred percent, bro. Yeah, it's it's gotten to a point where it's like I don't even, I can't even like I. I it's like mental health should is something that needs to be talked about within election cycles and within. Um, Congress and at a federal level and not only a federal level, but a state level. And I, I just don't see, I don't see enough of it. Like in terms of legislation, 
I think it could be very misused though because no um, i agree 100 percent. you hear stories about people literally like they they feel kind of sad and they post something and people show up at the door next day and just drag them to a mental hospital and we know how bad those are obviously like we don't want that to happen but yeah i think there there's a healthy compromise that you can hit and i think i, I just think it needs to be talked about more like there's it's just it's not even like it's more of an unsaid thing. And I, I do agree that I think citizens, I think people are starting to talk about it more. I think there is starting to be more conversation, more dialogue, and it's being destigmatized, right? Slowly. It's a process, but it, it I is. I see more in like women's mental health though. I do agree. I do agree that like men's mental health is something that just goes under the rug. And that's a complete, yeah. it's, it's sad um, because the, because I mean that's a whole separate podcast. I mean you could you could talk about men's mental health and just personal experiences and a lot of things. It's it's a very uh, it's a very interesting issue. Um, because um, I I don't know if you remember this, but there's something called femicide. femicide. Uh, the the um remember that that black and white challenge? Uh, Where, like, girls would post oh, yeah. a picture yeah and yeah, yeah, yeah like like challenge accepted. Right right right. So. That was originally because women in Turkey, they were killing them. Like there was so much female suicide at an insane, astonishing rate. Mm -hmm. And that's originally where the challenge was started. What blew my mind is that it was women only. The suicide rate in Turkey is insane for men too. But only because it was rising in women did this start. Like what about us, you know? I mean, I get that. But also I, I do think like... I, I don't know like the greater societal context behind the the challenge. I, I would definitely want to do more research. I, I feel like there is a reason why women were brought up, but I, I do agree that it's it needs to be brought up in uh, in all in all genders and all people because yeah. mental health is something that affects everybody and not just particular individuals. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I'm not saying it's a bad movement. I was I just yeah. I was wondering like why isn't this for everyone? True. I personally no. don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. <laughs> but, I thought uh, the challenge was, it, it got really stupid because it got to the point where people are just doing it for attention. I mean, that's performative activism. That's a whole separate thing. I mean, yeah, I have my issues with performative activism. I, I think. have so many issues with social media. I think the whole black square movement was really just, I, I, lo I told you I lost, did I tell you I lost like 35 followers that day? What's the black when square? When I didn't post the black square. What is that? It's like, it's the whole thing where you posted like a picture on Instagram and it was like hashtag blackout Tuesday. You might've deleted Instagram. That's probably why. You didn't I know don't check it. it. Okay. Yeah. But so basically it was like this. Oh, is that where like you make your, your Twitter handle or your no, 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 Insta no, no. thing? No, it was, um, so basically what you did, what, what it was, was you post a, a black square, right? On Instagram. Yeah. Um, saying hashtag black lives matter. Right. And, and, or not hashtag black lives matter. It was like hashtag blackout Tuesday or whatever it was. And you post a black square and like all, everyone was doing it. And I don't post on Instagram. Right. I'm someone who do, hasn't posted since 2015. Like I'm, I'm just not the biggest Instagram aesthetic pleasing dude. Like I don't post great pictures. The last picture I posted was a blurry vacation photo. That's besides the point, yeah. but I don't really post on Instagram. And so I didn't post on blackout Tuesday. I was like, whatever. Like, I don't, I, this is like I think it felt performative to me. I was like, I'm not good. I don't have to show people that I'm being an activist, that I'm trying to, you know, be a better person and trying to do these things. Even though I do support the movement, I'm not saying I'm sitting here and not supporting Black Lives Matter. I do support Black Lives Matter. I firmly do believe that all people should have equal rights, and Black people need to come first. I I'm not saying anything of the sort. But what I didn't like was that I feel like you had to shut like like I had so many, like the fact I lost 35 followers that day because I didn't post a black square just proves like how surface level our society is. I'm like, if you knew me as an individual, you would know that I'm very pro this movement. I, I, you know, have donated to several organizations. Like I've done things. I've went out to protest. Like I've had discussions with my family. I've done all these things. And yet like, and I've, I, you know, I'm watching like educational stuff about, you know, black history movements and stuff. And it's like, people just assume that I was like, you know, racist or something. And I was like, dude, like if you, and that's where it's just like social media is so basic. It's like people, people assume things about you, which just completely aren't true. And it's, it's kind of like, this reminds me of back after 9-11, like obviously we weren't here, but I hear stories about it all the time where it's like, if you were a brown immigrant, if you looked like 
you were from the Middle East or India or anything, you had to kind of prove your patriotism. You know, like mm-hmm. I love America. Like put a flag outside and like that's why there's a lot of flags outside. You see a lot of yeah. brown households have flags mm-hmm. outside. Because they still do. That's their their version of this. They're like, Absolutely. hey, I'm I'm for this. I'm for the country. Yeah. And I think the way you said it summed it up. Like it's performative. You know, like it's very I be- performative. You you might believe in it. But now you're forced to just do this it's like, thing that you don't. Let my in. actions speak louder than my stupid social media posts. Just because I don't That's post the, on social, I don't, don't I just because I don't post on that. social media doesn't mean that I'm like not actively trying to support this. Like it's that's bull. And like the thing is, so many people do it for attention. They yeah. a lot of people that do it, they don't even know a lot about the movement or don't support it. But they're like, hey, you know, like everyone else is doing, let me do it. Right. You know, because like. I'll, I'll look good then. That's mm-hmm. it's so pathetic. Yeah, and I think I mean, and every time I just cringe when these things come out because a lot of the people that post it, I know they don't care about it. Yeah, but I mean, I I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not going to assume for other people. I'm sure there are people that really do care and that they that post these things, and that's fine. I have no issue. Go ahead and post. It's just my personal decision not to really post because I felt it was performative. But and you that's, shouldn't be bullied into doing it. Exactly. And I mean, that's just my opinion. People can yeah. disagree with me all you want. But, you know, I, I, I just uh, don't think that a black square was going to end racism. Or, yeah, you know, that's... like, I, like, what the frick? I, and like, yeah, that's a whole separate, again, another, another discussion media. I'm going to have on this podcast later. But um, I think we're honestly just boomers, you know, we don't, we don't yeah, get the... Really. I think I really am. Like my friends call me an old ass man. Like I drink beer. My dad I calls me a flannels. I like viewpoints. I like real estate. Like, <laughs> <laughs> dude, straight up, bro. My friend, pro- my, are you, are you at that stage now where you drive by property? You're like, oh, that's a nice property. Dude, me and my dad do the same thing, bro. We'll drive by a house. We'll that. be like, bro, I wonder if that's a craftsman. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what like one time an my dad passed by a ranch. I'm like, that's a nice property. I immediately went on Zillow. I'm like, what? <laughs> Only that price? What? what <laughs> dude oh. oh my god i've turned into a straight up old dude bro i drink beer i look at fucking uh real estate i you know i'm looking at how to save money like I'm on stock oh i love stocks that's the a Roth whole IRA. separate argument bro uh, Roth iras um what are the other things that i'm really into i've just become an old dude Oh yeah. I mean, the fact is like, we've had this discussion and I'm going to have this discussion later with some, one of my other friends on the pod is um, like the fact that I want to live in the Bay area for the rest of my life and be like, king. no, (laughs) no, I'm getting as far away as I can. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I love it here. I absolutely love it. Love it. Love it here. But that's uh, besides the point. I'm not going to lie though. I love the weather here. Like this time where it starts to get kind of cloudy. Oh, and the, fall. The fall in the Bay is I fall in the Bay it. is legend. I love, I love it. fall in the Bay. Fall in the Bay I is one of my it. favorite times. Anyway, back to the actual topic at hand because we went on like a 50 minute rant on something else. <laughs> um, but what the fuck are these debates? <laughs> Entertainment. That's the question. Like, Entertainment. Like what are these debates? Like has have we really just – has our society turned into just looking for clickbait and entertainment? Like, are we looking for these debates to be entertaining? Or are we looking to like actually gain facts from them? And be informed. Like, hey, this yeah. candidate believes that. Let's see if that goes with my belief. Like, it's crazy, bro. If you go back and you watch, uh, what debate? Like, I went back and um, this was like a couple of years ago. I think, oh, because we had to do it in class. We watched um, one of the debates from the 2000 presidential election between Bush and Gore. Oh my Bush God. Gore. They sound so intellectual. Presidential <laughs> debate. They sound like watch a little bit of it. Al Gore Bush versus Gore, the third presidential debate. Yeah, don't you watch some of it later. Um, but it's a great like you just listen to these two talk. Like, yes, a lot of people fucking hated George W. Bush, uh, who are Democrats, and vice versa with Al Gore. But there was like I don't know, there was some level of like civility. And on top of there being a level of civility, there was a level level of like, okay, we are here to inform the American voters of what's going on and let's talk about what we're gonna do to solve these issues. And that has just been completely taken away in 2020. Like 20 years ago, in 2000, when these elections were happening, people were like, these two are having intellectual conversations about the budget, about foreign policy. Al Gore, I always have said this, is ahead, was completely ahead of his time. I think Al Gore was on the docket with climate change. He knew, 
like he was on top of his shit when it came to the environment the inconvenient truth if you haven't seen that is a fantastic documentary it is very boring but it's still very good um but al gore was ahead of the time and you can i mean you watch this debate and you see it like you're like gore knew what was up i'm gonna watch it after yeah and like my parents were big big gore supporters back in the day um not like big gore supporters but like they they were big al gore you know they were all supporting him if you talk to a lot of parents too they're all like oh like we loved gore especially around al gore is the best he al gore dude yeah my i was even talking to my mom and i was like she was like honestly if al gore ran in 2020 i would be so happy <laughs> he could be so much better than al gore everyone. is great dude al gore is yeah. great yeah anyway this is not the al gore loving session okay but um but yeah no i mean i felt like i mean i'm comparing like the two debates because i watched like highlights of the first one because you were asking me to watch it because you were like brother some clown shit I and, it was uh, so fun dude when the fly landed on his head i just no, that was the vp debate shit. the vp debate I had oh the vp did that was funny too the vp debate was funny yeah <laughs> fucking mike pence <laughs> the climate is changing that was like the climate what? is changing was the quote of the century dude <laughs> yeah. i was like golf clap for that but what one. annoyed me is that when he started to really like pound on Kamala like like what why were they it's not Kamala it's Kamala up? Kamala Harris like, what Kamala Harris like when he started to get at her they stopped it they were like okay next question I was like wait what I mean what? I, I I'm here to say and I will I will say this I think my Pence did win that debate um I think he won it by a fair margin. I think Kamala Harris, see, this is my analogy for this election right now, right? You, you look at it like a football game. The first two quarters, Joe Biden, or not Joe Biden, Donald Trump turned the ball over, right? A couple times, okay? Yeah. And Joe Biden scored on those turnovers. You know, he's up. I don't think he's, he's scored, but he got a field goal. He, he got, he, okay, he's he scoring. Got he's scoring. He's, he's converting. He's making points. You know, he scored a couple touchdowns. There's probably a touchdown, a couple field goals, whatever. We don't have to get into the intricacies of the analogy. And um, now, you know, it's like the second half and Trump's down big. So he has to throw the, he has to throw these big balls. You know what I'm saying? Like he's got to yeah, throw like, balls he's, down he's the field. He's kind of like the Cowboys. You know? Yeah, <laughs> and, he's, fucking, he's the Cowboys. And, and Biden is what the Niners should have been in the Super Bowl. He's just running out the clock. He's just running the ball, running the ball, running the ball. And that's what Kamala Harris did in that debate was she was very much just like, okay, listen, uh, we're up big. We're not trying to fuck this up. Like, clinton did in 2016 like clinton is what the niners did in the super bowl which was throw the ball she was an yeah. idiot but kamala harris was like all right we have a big lead we're just running the ball out and that's what she did in that debate you know she was just like okay i'm just gonna you know say things and and uh you know just kind of say glittering things to you know make my base happy and you know, but she to she was i was, was pointing like, this out with my parents like she was so bad all she did was use pathos like oh when you are at home and you're wondering where your next meal comes from. She didn't say anything substantive. Dude, her, oh my God. Okay, she did I'm, I'm sick those. of this line and from Joe Biden. He said this in the last two debates. Imagine the amount of times the kitchen chair is empty when you come home. Oh my God. He said that line at least a hundred times. I'm like, Joe. Shut up. Like, no, just like, up. no, that's fine. Like, I, 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 I get the intent. But when that's the, the line, only thing you line. say, that But I'm like, dude, why off. do you repeat it's like, that When line are you going like to say something? Times? That is substantive. When are you going to say something that I can really sink my teeth in and say, you There's know what? There's no substance. Solid. That's the problem. There's no substance. Even, so like, sad. Did you find substance in the Democratic primary debates? No. Really? Not even the Republican one. I really thought that Pete was, like, honestly one of the smarter candidates. Just that was my opinion. But, but yeah. I was, out of all of them, I was honestly, like, you know, I don't agree with all of Bernie's policies, but he's a good dude. Yeah. So you know what? I think he's the best person. And guess what? He got screwed again. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, because the dude, the DNC, they know that Bernie will shake it up. He knows yeah. that he's, he's going to not, he's not just going to take other Republicans. Yeah, he's dude. I even, the, I even have it written Democrats in my, uh, in my notes, like that Biden line is super overused. Like get that shit out of here. <laughs> Which one? The, the chair line. Oh my God. What he chair heard, line? The empty chair at the kitchen table. Like when he's talking about Corona. And he, dude, I love, he looked at the camera like this, like, he overuses Holy, the line. I hate. I, I hate that. Fucking so oh my! It's just it sounds so canned too. I'm just like sound real. Like at least change up the line. Do something yeah. a little different. But like, like we no. know your PR team said all that, dude. Oh my! You know, oh my, you know what pissed me off the most? I think this is what made me mad. Was after the vice presidential debate when the fly landed on Mike Pence's head, which was very funny, by the way. Um, like at, right afterwards, like they they started selling fly swatters on Joe Biden's campaign website. 
just immediately after. I was like, dude. That's see, that's kind of funny. That's like a. Myth. It was that, funny, but it was just funny. like, bruh, this is so like political. No, like, dude, it just felt dude political. the best one was LeBron. Wait, LeBron tense tweet. Wait, what did? He, oh God. Oh my God! I I want to. Re- Twitter exploded with that just one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So LeBron on Insta. He um, took a picture of the fly and he said, y'all know what fly's favorite destination is, right? Yep, you guessed it. And he just put the shit emoji everywhere. No. Yeah, just search it up. LeBron, Mike Pence, fly. I think I tweeted right when the um, fly landed oh, you on Mike. I, yeah, I do. Oh, we'll follow each other after. We'll follow each other after. Uh, <laughs> I think I <laughs> tweeted like right after Mike Pence had like the fly land on his head. I was like, oh, wonder how many fly babies were born in that white head. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> I was like, what if the fly just dropped a couple eggs and just dipped? Just sitting there. <laughs> that fly was there a long ass time too, bro. I was like, I also thought to myself, I was like, doesn't it get itchy? Like at a certain point, like I get like, I feel it when like a bug yeah. is on your head, you know, you're like, ah. Hey, but, like, he was just talking. Who knows? He was just talking. Like, I was no, like, no, Mike. Blew my mind. He kept shaking his head. I was like, and me I was and like, my Mike, dad, we complete, it's, we it's lost right track there. of the debate, dude. We lost, we lost track of the debate. Yeah, we were focused, I stopped. Whoa, I was focused on that like, fly the whole like, time. Where's the fly? Like, oh, he's still hanging on. Like, oh, he's gone. Oh, dude, that was hilarious, bro. Yeah. That was that was straight comedy. That shit was hilarious. Like, when that happened, I just typed in fly, and immediately Twitter popped up. Everyone's like, dude, there's a fly in his head, dude. And yeah, well, one of lives. my favorite Niner beat writers was like, in addition to Niners coverage, he was like. There is a fly on Mike Pence's head. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. <laughs> if the Niners beat writers are writing about it, you know it's bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're going to be tomorrow. Uh, Jimmy, J- Jimmy Garoppolo, poor performance against whoa, Bill Belichick's whoa, whoa, star whoa, defense. Whoa, 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 Jimmy Garoppolo. We don't hate on Garoppolo like that, bro. We don't 200 hate on yards, Jimmy G. two interceptions. No, Maybe not at all. Touchdown. I like Jimmy G, bro. Jimmy G is solid. I like him, too, yeah. He's also a very good-looking quarterback. He has so uh, much gray hair, dude. I saw that in the interview. I told you about that. I, I saw him in real like, life. Dude, There's 20. way more gray hair. He's 28. He's in his 20s. He looks older than my dad. No, he does not look older. No, no. My Jimmy dad. Garoppolo looks like your dad. I'm pretty sure Swami Uncle does not look like uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. No offense, Swami yeah. Uncle. No, no, no. I mean, oh, like there's Jimmy only Garoppolo. one man that looks like Jimmy. That's Jimmy G. That's Jimmy G. Yeah. Anyway, uh, topic five. I was like, and this is another um, – major thing i was thinking about uh transition time uh let's like if you were to compare this election to 2016 like what ways does this feel bigger what ways like are you like this is similar what ways are you like this is different how are you feeling about it so in 2016 i was i was very liberal at that time and i was more like so as trump was coming up you know he started out as a joke like dude the stuff that guy's saying like with the wall like there's no way he makes it up and slowly, he's like that underdog, you know, just rising, like, wait, wait, do we take him seriously? Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Now he's in the final? He's in the Super Bowl? What? Like, how did that happen? Yeah, and bro, then I feel that. All the, all the stuff, like, oh, like, the recordings of Trump on the bus saying that stuff and Hillary's emails, all this slander just came out. That just annoyed me. It rubbed me the yeah. wrong way because in the debates it turned less about what is your foreign policy what is your economic plans what is your social views it went from that what it should be to more of what do you have to say about your emails for sure uh, trump she what do you have to say about it. that quote? was the problem she didn't have a good response to it and yeah, that, like she's really like just... oh um there's nothing wrong with the emails why did you delete over a hundred thousand emails like i just did it was like why did you why the mere no, numbers should be no. suspect enough like a hundred hundred thousand bro it's kind of like I, mean, if you catch, I haven't received a hundred thousand emails in my life <laughs> you know, it's like it's like if you catch someone cheating on you and then you're like show me where you were and it's like oh these text messages oh let me delete them it's like, <laughs> what you deleted right in front of me it's like no there's nothing on them you know uh, oh, dude, there's nothing wrong it was just uh you know uh, the cloud took up some space <laughs> yeah, <it was> like, <laughs> too much space on the cloud know. dude and dude the, dude the weirdest part is that people like my parents they somehow validate it they're like so what i was like you don't see a problem with that it's because bro everyone was looking for like oh just a way to like her you know, because they were just like, okay, Trump sucks, obviously. This guy's yeah. weird. And especially in our area, everyone was like, all right, Trump sucks. We got to find a way to like Hillary Clinton. And listen, if that's just ignoring the fact that she, like, deleted 100,000 emails or whatever, that's fine. But, <laughs> it, you know, and that's what, like, they tried to do was just deny it. And um, 
but like no i mean like i think in particular for like my parents and i don't know if this is particularly true for like indian immigrant parents but my parents are like big big clinton supporters they always have been my parents too and like because i think one of the first presidents that came that was was like actually like president for a long time when they were here was was the clintons right in the 90s but you think the the scandal would have made them like oh no my my mom and dad love bill clinton bro they still love him every time bill clinton speaks at like one of these conventions like both of them sit on the couch and like my mom hates politics and she will watch bill clinton speak like my mom loves bill clinton my dad loves Bill Clinton. My fun fact: my uh, my dad got his diploma uh, for college handed to him by Hillary Clinton. So he oh, was really okay. excited. He was like, "Oh, if Hillary wins, then I get my uh, I got my diploma handed to me by a president of the United States." I was like, "All right, dad. that that is pretty cool." I that is cool. That, that is cool, cool. No lie. Yeah. Um, but I was also just like, I don't know. It got to the point I was very sick of Hillary Clinton by a certain point. Yeah. Um, and I, what pissed me off is everyone was like, oh, like the first woman president. I was like, what the hell are you saying? I mean, yes, that would be cool, like, right? But, but, I'm not like, saying that's but wrong. But like, why are we voting based on genitalia than actual beliefs? <laughs> when, you know what shatters the narrative more? Joe Jorgensen is running for president right now. I've not Joe seen Jorgensen? a single, a single person say make her president because we'll have another woman president. The first woman president. I've yeah. not seen a single person say Who is that. Joe Jorgensen? She runs for the, the independent party, the Green Party, I think. Did you actually do your research and like look into her as a candidate? Yeah, dude. Because honestly. Please don't say you're voting Green Party. Please don't say she you're lines, voting. She lines most of mine. I'll be honest. Please don't say you're going to vote for her. I'm not going to say it on the pod. You know, it's already divisive enough. We're not oh, going to divide Oh my God, dude. Okay, we're going to have a whole conversation outside the oh, pod we will with have. very we'll unpolitically that. correct yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, language. That I but can't you, say you get what I mean, here. right? Like, what? I mean, I get what you mean by like the values of like, you know, oh, like that. De- like, I get it, right? Like, I get that you're like, I don't fuck with Democrats. I don't fuck with Republicans. I'm with you, one hundred percent. No, it's not. I, but, I don't. I don't like the idea of the parties. You know, there might be individuals I like, but the fact that they divide me, like, no, you're a Democrat or a Republican. I don't like that. I don't yeah. like being bullied into choosing a side. You know? No, I, I feel it. I feel that yeah. 100%. Like that's that's something that's um <clears throat> like getting bullied into a side is is tough. Like I don't personally fucks with it. And if but, anything that makes me hate your sides more. Absolutely. It's it's yeah. like we're not not your sides but like <laughs> people are like oh like like vote democrat or like like choose a side. I'm like I don't want to now. Like you're forcing me into something I'm not. For sure. Yeah. Just my view. Yeah. No, I, I I get you, and I think I think a lot of people do definitely agree with with that sentiment. You know, it's like I don't want to be a Democrat, I don't want to be a Republican, and no party really aligns with the way I feel, or at least any relevant party. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, there's smaller parties. But yeah, they, I mean, so but that's relevant. the thing, right? It's just like a fucking. That's where my thing is. Is just like in this particular election, we can talk about the future, right? Like 2024, 2028, and hope that there are more parties out there that have a decent following, right? <sighs> I mean, and, and see where we go from there. But we are at a point in 2020 where it's like, there are two major parties. There's either the Democrats or the Republicans. And if you vote for a Green Party, your vote won't matter. That's just the reality of the situation. You vote Libertarian, your vote doesn't fucking if matter. If you get them to 5%, though, they get more funding. So you, you, you supplement them for the future. So maybe in this election, it might not matter. But in the future election, they're not getting 5%, funding. bro. They won't get 5%. But if they get, but if, if, if the mentality is, vote democrat or republican or your vote is wasted i don't believe in that i you do know, like okay your, your i get i get that like if they get five percent like their, their their funding is whatever i don't how much did jill stein get in 16 like she was one of the more like prevalent yeah. green party candidates for the first time in a long time jill stein voter 2016 how many did she get I think it was 1% of the overall vote, to be honest. Not even Results. less. Okay. 0.5. Oh. In what? 2017, the Washington Post reported that the, Sen- the Senate Intelligence Committee is looking at Jill Stein's Green Party for potential collusion with Russia. <laughs> I did not know that. 
Well, RIP Greenport. <laughs> and she got 1.07% of the popular That's vote. what I'm saying. And Jill Stein was – what about Gary Johnson? Because he was also pretty relatively popular. But also Gary Johnson's a fucking idiot. The man was like, what's Aleppo? <laughs> I, I think people forgot about that genuinely. This man didn't know what Aleppo was. I was like, you consider yourself to be a foreign policy guy. You don't know what Aleppo is? Like, okay, bro. For Where sure. are the results? see come on dude come on come how on, much on. of the vote did not ross perot gary johnson get no not ross perot ross perot was like one of the biggest uh third party candidates though, yeah by the way. he but he was 92 he got like 19 percent of the overall vote. oh here it is gary johnson got three percent of the national vote oh that's good which isn't bad yeah. but yeah, so he actually set the record for the Libertarian Party's best ever performance. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe Joe Jorgensen could beat that. Uh, like, I don't know, dude. I didn't, that's the thing is, like, we were hearing about Johnson. We were hearing about Stein in 16. Like, I was hearing these names, right? But with Joe Jorgensen, I'm not hearing shit. Because she doesn't get traction. That's the – it's so – the media is so polarized now. It's like, oh, I'll either opponent Trump or Biden. Because yeah. that's, what get, well, that's what gets a – clicks listen i mean obviously that's like not her problem right like yeah it's just it's just it's tough it's unfortunate you know but i mean it's yeah and i don't think that uh that obviously she's not going to win president i don't think she'll get five percent of the vote like i i mean obviously in a utopian society if she were to get five percent of the vote that would be nice you know because like libertarians would be represented in the next election hopefully but you know like, just with the amount of market share that the Democrats and Republicans have. It's, it's just, not, it's all about money at the end of the day. It's yeah, economics. It's and funny. at the end of the day, like if, if you're, if you don't have the funding, you're fucked. And it's like, because even if they get their foot in the door, every big lobbyist is saying, Hey, we're not going to, we're not going to give you money. Yeah. What do you do for us? Like the Democrats could give me that Republicans could give me that. Why would I give money to you? And they'll just get outfunded. Exactly. And that's, that's tough. And it's yeah. like, it's just like, unfortunately, like that's the situation that we're in. And that's why I believe certainly that like, you know, it's, I don't think it's like necessarily like fine to vote for libertarian or green party, because I just, I don't think they're going to get 5% of the vote. Like genuinely. I'll just say vote, vote for who you want, you know, because vote for yeah. who you want. I mean, don't vote for Kanye. Please don't vote for Kanye. He's horrific. That'd be so funny. No, it wouldn't be. That would be funny. so funny. I, don't, I do not think it's Because imagine if you're like the one of the two people that voted for him and you just see a box of fresh Yeezys at your door. Hey, man, you voted for me? I Fuck reward you my don't, Okay, this is also another go. conception that people have is that Kanye was running for president. Bro, he's the vice president on the independent party. He's the vice, yeah. Some guy named Rocky like Garcia. I don't know his last name, but Rocky whatever is the uh, president. But Kanye is the face of that campaign. Who is Rocky? I don't even know. Like, know. is it just like Sylvester Stallone's gonna walk out and be like, "Hey guys, <laughs> Rocky De La Fuente"? That's his name. What an interesting name. He's a 66-year-old dude from San Diego. Jennifer Aniston dec- discourages voters from supporting Kanye West. Yeah, yeah, she did. Wow. And you know what? If Rachel from Friends says don't vote for Kanye, then I'm not voting for Kanye because Rachel from wow. Friends can have my life. Oh. Rachel that Green. is disappointing. Rachel Green is my fave. Oh, it's just in Kentucky. What? What? They, there was an article that said, is Kanye polling higher than Biden? And that was the title. And I was like, oh, dude, like I clicked on that. Click And, then it said, and then the first line of it is, is he polling higher in Kentucky? The short answer is no. I was like, what? No, why, did you, why did you publish it then? Because it's clickbait. That's why. But and, they um, got me. and I just gave them my ad revenue, so hey, Shit. I'm sure they're happy. But uh even to like I was just thinking about this for like these smaller parties, like getting on the ballot is just a battle in itself. Yeah. Like Democrats and Republicans are automatically on the ballot. But like these guys, like it's a battle to even like be, you know, on the ballot, like as a voter, let alone people like even voting you for president. I want to know what's going through their head because while Biden and um, like do they do they, they know they're gonna lose? Like, but but I think I really think their thing is just get your foot in the door and that'll give us enough momentum to try and get a foothold. But really, yes, they're trying, you know. And, and I respect that too. Yeah, 
you know, you're fighting for what you believe in. Can't go wrong. Go for it, bro. I mean, it's unfortunately, I think it's just a money sinker, you know? Yeah. It's just like, unfortunately, your money is just going into a hole, and I don't think a lot of people are hearing about you. I'm going to get some water. This podcast is going long, dude. Yeah, bro. Yeah, give me one sec. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm still here. Um, Yeah. Uh, let me know if you guys like this podcast or anything. Um, you know, I know this is a, uh, this podcast is uh very, you know, all over the place. It's uh it's our first one. So bear with us, but, uh, let me know if you guys like it. Um, you know, let me know what your guys' thoughts are. If you guys disagree with us, agree with us. I think me and Nihar both have uh, our different opinions. And I think that's, that's, what's nice about this is we're able to have like a very civil, relatively civil discussion about it. And, um, I hope you guys, uh, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, you know, um, we're going to do some more fun, lighthearted questions next week. You know, I know this is a little dark for the first week, but, uh, but yeah, we're going to do some, uh, some more fun questions next week. Uh, so definitely do stay tuned for that. Um, damn, this has run like what, three hours plus? No, not even probably like an hour and a half, but, uh, but, but yeah. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far, and uh, we're just gonna wait for uh, for Nihar to get water real quick. Um, I can only talk for uh, for this amount of time, so yeah. Um, but yeah, edit this part out for sure, for sure. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Okay. Back to water. Um, so I think that we 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 co- so but like I mean, do you just wanna like uh kind of go forth with this uh this question? Just like what ways does this election feel bigger? Like what ways does it feel weirder? I I would say it feels it doesn't feel bigger for me because I think the twenty sixteen felt bigger, but this just feels weird. Because 2016, I thought it was an anomaly. Like, oh, these two, both of them suck? That'll never happen again. It yeah. Happened again. And what can you do? I think that's genuinely just like 16 felt bigger because it was like the first time where we we're like, wow, both these people really are ass. <laughs> what are we doing as a country? Yeah. And then yeah. obviously no one listened and now we're here. But um, but I feel like it it does feel bigger in a lot of ways in terms of just like everything that has gone on this year and like the circumstances. And so like, I feel like there's much more of a sense of urgency, especially amongst people. Everyone's like, okay, we like, we got to go out and do this, this, and this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then other people are like, Oh no, like we don't have to do, you know? And then like, you know, every, there's like much more of an urgency, like get out and vote, get out and vote, get out and vote, go vote, go vote. Right. So I feel like that's been, that's been refreshing. I mean, Definitely. I personally am recommending on everyone on this podcast, please go vote, research your issues, do your thing, make sure your voice is heard. I think that's important. And um, vote for whoever you want. That's the biggest part. Uh, okay. Vote okay. for who aligns with you. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, hey, I personally. Don't get bullied into it. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I mean, I, I get that. I get that. Um, and we'll just do one more question because uh, uh, I don't want to keep you here for too long. Um, but like – this is another one that I was really thinking about uh, kind of a sub question for the democracy is dead. And we'll finish off with one really quick one at the end. But do you think that voters like who are voting in this election, who are very much about obviously getting Trump out of office, do you think voters are genuinely trying or are genuinely going to keep Biden accountable when he gets into office? If, if he does. Well, I think it's all about relativity, you know, because for the past four years, they've just been pissed off by everything Trump's saying. And I think when Biden gets into office for them, it's just a breath of fresh air. Like, oh, how perfect. We finally have a Democrat as president. And I think they'll just go into autopilot. You know, Mm -hmm. there could be economic issues happening still. We're in the Middle East and they're like, you know what? It's okay because we're in the house now. I mean, I feel like foreign policy just that's like a whole separate conversation. I feel like foreign policy just isn't talked about as much. Like within society, and it should be. It's because it's not as it's because there's no it's because there's like no COVID nineteen pandemic. There's no war. Yeah. Like that's the only reason people talk about like foreign policy is when there's a war or like when we're intervening somewhere. Yeah. When there's action, 
but obviously COVID is something that like is, has taken over all our lives, yeah. you know? So I feel like I'm for good reason is a pressing issue. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but, uh, but I do like, I do think to some extent, I, I like, it's partially me just being like, I hope people keep Biden accountable. You know what I'm saying? And I hope that even when he gets into office and maybe if he fucks up or makes a mistake, like people call him out on his bullshit. Like, I hope, you know, like that's like genuinely there, but I also just seeing the way it's going. Just like, I I'm worried also because I feel like people are just going to be content. Like, Oh, like, and I'm talking like the mass majority of society. I'm sure there'll always be people who are critical and always people who are going to be, you know, like following his stuff and all that. But actually I think a majority of people look at it, look at it critically. You know, they're like, wait, that wasn't the best move, but it's the small vocal minority. Yeah. They'll be like, Oh, Biden. Perfect. Doing an amazing job. You know, I feel like it's going to be a lot it's of, compar- like it's going to be a lot of Trump comparisons. Right it's going to be a lot of comparisons. Yeah. Right? Like oh, when, if Joe then, fucks Trump up, was... this is what I'm worried about. If when Joe fucks up, right. It makes a mistake. Yeah. If he, if he gets elected, everyone's going to be like, Oh, but look at Trump four years ago. Like if he didn't, he made a way bigger mistake and it's just going to be like comparing so, mistakes and it's not looking at the present moment and saying, okay, Joe fucked up, but what can we do to get out of this hole or whatever? Yeah. Like it, it's a red herring. You're just comparing we're not saying Trump's thing was, was good. It was shitty. Yeah. Why are you comparing it to Biden's thing? They're both shitty, you know? Yeah. No, like, and I agree with that. Hold and them I accountable. Think, it's so I think, I, I think that's just what we have to do. I think that's our duty, honestly, as voters, as American citizens, is we just got to be like, hey, listen, I, I may not fuck with you. If Trump gets elected, if Biden gets elected, it's like, I may not fuck with either of you, but we just got to keep you guys accountable. You know what I'm saying? Keep yeah. you guys accountable for what you do. Make sure that what you're doing is not negatively really impacting a lot of different individuals. Like, and I think that's just, that's the most important part of it all. You know what I'm saying? Because you hear a lot about, like, you see in the news, like, all these Trump people, like, waving their flags and, like, going to Trump rallies and stuff. But really, that's not most of his base. Most of his base, his approval rating has just fallen down. I mean, absolutely. I mean, obviously, his his handling of COVID has just been disastrous. Yeah. And most of his support, again, it's like the... The vocal minority, we see them, they're like, oh, the Trump supporters like him. Like, really, most of them are like, dude, what are you doing? Like, mm-hmm. People are dying. The yeah. economy is shit. And yeah. you're just saying, oh, don't let COVID dominate your life. For sure. You got COVID. For sure. You got it. For sure. And yeah. People, man. No, <laughs> dude, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's just, uh, it's crazy for sure, uh, you know? And it's just like, I hope that society does keep him accountable, but at the same time, I am definitely am worried that society is just going to compare him to Trump constantly, 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 and just say he's better than Trump. But I'm going to be like, but I hope people are like, hey, listen, like Trump's in the past. What are we going to do to fix our future? And yeah. that's what I'm worried about, I think, the most um, out of all of that. And real quick, before I let you go, um, back, kind of circling back to the, uh, to the uh, question that we had at the beginning. I'm hoping um, it's a football question. No, it's not. Uh, is democracy really dead? It's dead, but we can still revive it. There's and is so there much. hope? That was my next question. Yeah. There, what, there where do you think the is. hope is? The hope comes with holding the media and our politicians accountable. Of saying, hey, I see what you're doing. You know, don't make me hate the other side just because of what they believe. You know, they might have different beliefs. I might have different, but that's what makes us human. So stop making it us versus them. Stop dividing us because in the end, we're the American people. Those are still my brothers out there. So don't divide us anymore than we already are, you know? That makes sense. You know, I I do believe that there is hope. You know, I think what gives me hope, but also does give me like suspicion is is our generation. I think it's a double-edged sword. You know, I think you're going to see a lot of younger people come up who are obviously irritated with the way the system is running. You know, people like AOC, you may not agree with her, uh, with her issues, whatever, but I feel like this younger generation is getting more of what's going on within, a, within the greater context of society. They're more in touch with us. I think and we get what more what's going on, but we're also less tolerant of new things. Absolutely. I, I do yeah, agree with that's that. That's where I'm like, like, come on guys. Like I'm part of this generation. Like, come on. Yeah. But well, I mean, I, I, there's nothing I, wrong if a guy has a different belief. You don't have to like shout him yeah. down. I do think, though, that, like, it's important to have younger people, you know, in in office, people who, like, because, like, I, I go back to this where fucking, what was it, Zuckerberg was in, uh, was testifying to Congress, and, uh, oh, that thing was, and so everyone was like, so what is a retweet? How do you, uh, 
press the retweet button. What is a like? And I'm just like, dude, these people are worse than my dad at technology. It's like out of touch. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. And that's what gives me hope is that when younger people come in, they're going to be like more in touch with the people and they're going to realize, okay, this is maybe what our, by then there's going to be a new technology, the new generation. Like we're going to be the boomers. We're going to be like, what is this VR? We're not be the boomers. Like, dude, give it that. Get the program, Dad. Like we're, we're not gonna. <laughs> no, that's it. always the case. I'm saying, like, just get people in Congress that know what a like button is. Like, that's not a really hard thing to ask for. You know what I'm saying? Like, why do we elect all these old ninety year old dudes on their deathbed? Why do we do that? <laughs> they don't understand it. Why don't we elect some forty year olds that understand both sides? You know, they've they've seen the past and they're. They're seeing modern day society. They know I, I hope that's where society technology. is trending. But I think with our generation, you're going to start to see way more younger officials. I just, I think that's where it's headed. And I think that gives me reason to be like, okay, I think we have some sort of hope. Again, yeah. So I think we both agree. Democracy is... I think democracy is on the wrong path. I don't think it's On dead. the wrong path, but there's there's time to... I think there is time to fix it. And I think yeah. that we can fix it. And I hope that in 10 years we're having this conversation, we're like, democracy is well and alive and everyone is working together. But obviously that won't <laughs> happen. Um, we'll probably be back here in 10 years and being like, bro, the purge Dude, is this happening. Sucks. Yeah, I hope I'm back fired. here in 10 years. I hope my podcast doesn't get canceled after the first episode. But... <laughs> I guess we'll find out, dude. Hey, bro, this <laughs> is the first episode. Thank you so much for coming on, bro. I appreciate hey, it. Hey, man, love to love to get me on bro hey uh, yeah. get me on the next one dude uh maybe not the next one but uh maybe soon soon i promise oh soon. for sure we're, yeah. Uh, but yeah we're gonna be talking about a lot of other issues i know today was a little darker but i just decided like i think we should do um you know something related to uh to politics because you know election day is coming up election and coming uh, i up. thought the theme would be nice uh but for those of you who listen to this thank you for listening to the whole thing i know it's probably long and kind of hard to get through but uh you know we did talk about some fun stuff as well um, but do go out and vote as we, we both agree on that. I think you should both go, you should yes, go sir. and vote, get your voice heard, vote, get your sticker, get that Most sticker. The Santa Clara County stickers are really cool. So for those yeah. of you in Post Santa them Clara on Insta, County, you know, put they're dope. Filter. Hashtag yeah. I voted. Yeah. You'd look hella cool. Yeah. So, you know, at least in my eyes, I'd be like, yeah, Damn, that's cool. But it's better than the Supreme sticker to be honest. Yeah. Go out and vote. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, evening, night whatever it is when you're listening to this um any last words for people what can i say dude it was great being on the essential question podcast thank you patriot and- nation big game tomorrow okay it's gonna well, be actually it depends when this episode comes out this episode could come out and like the patriot game could be done so oh no i'll sound just stupid yeah you know, saying oh dude jimmy g's gonna suck he so we'll see questions. we'll see what happens when this episode comes out um yeah. but I do hope my San Francisco 49ers do win tomorrow. They come out with a dub, four and three. Um, But anyway, thank you guys all so much for listening. Uh, It's been amazing talking to you. I appreciate your time, bro. Um, And uh, we'll be back next week with with another episode and another question to dive into. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, I'll leave you to it. All right. All right, man. Take care. Peace, bro. Thank you for coming on. Peace. Later.